All right, we are back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt, the bi-weekly horror hot fix. I want to say welcome you all tonight. As the months have been getting colder, we're nearing December, which is one of my favorite times of the year. I live in a hot area of the world, so when things get colder, it's much nicer. And since things are chilling down, I thought I'd bring you a chilling game to be quite fitting. It's kind of weird, because I think this is like one of the first times I've actually repeated a theme, so to speak, which is games are cold. And I guess that's kind of a good indication that we can have seasonal episodes, which I guess congratulations to that. And I want to thank you all for having us for that. Anyway, tonight's game is going to be Until Dawn. You might be wondering, how do you how do you speed run a game that's kind of like a movie? And you'd be surprised. I do know from personal experience that this run does have a surprising amount of depth in it. And we're going to be taking on a wild journey if you've never seen this game. Anyway, here is Until Dawn featuring Matt Matt. Take it away. Hello, everyone. So, yes, this is Until Dawn. Um, if anyone's played this game, it is a very good casual game. Um, and it's pretty interesting speed, and there's a lot of things that we do to, to make the game go as fast as possible. Um, but there's, there's quite a lot of downtime, so I'll just get into it and explain more as we go. So, um, one quick little thing that you can do in this game is if you start the run from the first episode um you actually get a different introduction from the doctor um which saves about 40 seconds so it's actually faster to start from from episode select um so yeah, that's what we do um so yeah okay so i'll give you a countdown three two one go so straight away we're not going to do anything for a little bit there's some cutscenes we have to watch which is a um a recurring theme in this run, there's a lot of cutscenes. So if you've never seen this game before and you want to actually enjoy the story, which is what this game's about, then you get to experience it this entire run because the game is all story. But we are going to do certain things to make certain things happen, which speed up the game. Um, so as you can see, there's things called a butterfly effects, which it, which it goes over here. And those are like choices that you can make that determine what happens in the game um the way things go um but this game you wouldn't believe it when you play it casually maybe but it's very very in-depth every single tiny choice really does make a difference on what happens and these little tiny choices that i'll be doing um make certain things happen that actually speed up the game um so there is some choices that are mainly just um faster in terms of you know it speeds up dialogue uh faster dialogue means you go faster yeah but there is a lot of choices where when you pick a certain one certain things happen later on in the game so there'll be choices i'm doing in chapter two um that, that make a difference in chapter three even though you wouldn't really know it but i'll explain those things when, when we get to them um but if you ever played this game the story is basically a bunch of teenagers um in a lodge up in the mountains um oh my God. there's bad things happening and there's a lot of bad things happening not just one bad thing happening and yeah you, your 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 goal is to try and survive with the characters but i won't be doing that because that is slow um but i'll explain more about that later on but yeah this is like a prologue this is the prologue chapter So I'll let you enjoy a little bit of the story. Um, so this this chapter's pretty simple. Um, there's not really much you do. This chapter's mostly just cutscenes. There's a little bit of walking, but that's about it. Hannah. <laughs> um, also, a uh, little little side note: if anyone doesn't know this, if anyone has a PlayStation Five. Um, this game on PS4 and the PS4 Pro runs at about 30 FPS, and a lot of the times it drops to like maybe 20 or 15. It's actually that laggy. It's Hannah. Um, but if you're lucky enough to have a PlayStation 5, um, this game runs at 60 FPS without any patches. It will run on 60 FPS on 1.0. Don't know why it never got a patch for the PS5, but it runs at 60 FPS. So if you'd like to experience the game in a smoother frame rate, then you should. Uh, Play it on PS5. So, now we get to move a little bit, but not much. Um, there's a note that we need to look at. So I'm gonna go and look at that. Oh my God. What did our naive 
your sister get herself into now? Yeah, so they're pulling a prank on uh, her sister, Hannah. Um, which will lead to some bad events, which we'll see very shortly. I do know a cool part about this game as well is if you're at all interested in the story of the game, well, the speedrun pretty much shows you uh, the whole story. And see where it goes. Yeah. So if you've never played this game before and you've never watched it before and you don't actually plan on playing it, then you get to see the entire story through this. And um, people that might not know this, maybe someone did one playthrough and that was it, but this game only has one ending. Um, no matter what you do, it will always end the same way. The only difference is how many people you have alive, and you'll get... A, um, th there is actually... Uh, if you if you get everyone to survive, I believe you do get an extra cutscene at the end. Um, that one is actually... Um, After the credits. I think that one's tied to one survivor in particular. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're not going to say what it was, but... You, but, uh, you won't get to see yeah. that. So we choose to go right there, so to go out the door, because it's faster than just trying to wake up Josh, and then she just goes out the door anyway. It's fine. She just can't take a joke. It was just a prank. Um, so uh, some of the QTEs that you have to do in this game are actually faster to match them. They are all the same every time you play the game. Um, it is faster to match some of them, but on the climbing sections, you don't actually have to match them. And... Usually it's preferable not to, because it's very easy to fail if you press the wrong button trying to match. Which is funny, because in the speedrun, I'm imagining the idea of just, like, really fast QTE. It's funny, because if we didn't mention this, like, people wouldn't even understand that there might be QTEs coming up, and, like, what these are going to do is, like, hey, um, if you don't hit the QTE, your characters are going to trip, and then you get a longer animation. So, oddly enough, if you're missing yeah. the QTE, you're going to be losing time. If you let it play out longer than just mashing it, it's going to be like, oh, you have to push the button while it's approaching. Yeah, but some of them it isn't fast if you match them because it still plays out the, uh, the 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 animation of where it would tick down for you to press the button. It will still play that out even if you match it, uh, which it did just then. Um, but they're also it is also faster to fail some QTEs, um, and believe it or not, there is not a single QTE in this game that is bound to the X button. Really. Um, they're all either triangle, square, and circle, yeah. So if you want to fail a QTE, just mash X, and it will fail instantly, because there's never a QTE that, that's bound to X. So this game also uses, makes use of the, uh, the touchpad. And it also makes use of the speaker in the controller, um, but it, it's not really useful for, like, a speedrun or, like, casual stuff. It just alerts you, I think, when there's choices coming up that you have to press. It just kind of makes a noise in the controller. Um, like when when a QTE is ticking down, it'll it'll start to like beep. I think. Hello. Hello. Um, but I have the sound on the controller turned down really low because it annoys me. Um, so yeah, we're just moving here. Um, we just got to go and try and find Hannah. She's down here. Um, so yeah, literally every single second in this game counts. So movement is very important in this game, and it can cost you a lot of time if you don't do it right. And believe it or not, but the movement in this game is actually quite awkward. Um, you can get stuck pretty easily. Um, on PS5, I've noticed at 60 FPS, if you're walking behind a, a companion, that you can just stop for no reason as well. Um, there's actually something funny that will happen later on in Chapter 5 with the lantern. Uh, on PS5 at 60 FPS, the lantern just starts flying everywhere. It looks really funny. Because I don't think they tested it for this. So, this. Now we've just got more cutscenes and choices, no more movement yet until chapter one. But now we're going to find out why why bad things are going to happen to these these two poor girls. They think this uh, this guy with his, his very dangerous flamethrower um, is actually a bad guy. But if you play this game, you'll find that he's not actually a bad guy and he was trying to help them, but they don't know that. I mean, if you saw a guy running towards you with a mask and a flamethrower, I don't think you'd be too excited about that. <laughs> oh, 
No, no, they, they fell. I mean, it's actually faster to just let go there. Instead of uh, dropping Hannah first. And by a little bit. So um, here's the scene I was talking I about. He, um, he talks about how you can't year. change what happened last year. You can only affect the future. Um, Accept it. So move on. Um, that's the scene that's about 40 seconds faster than, than starting from a new game. So, um, and you, you, you could say that that's kind of like new game plus, but the thing is we didn't realize that until way after the rules had already been in place and people had already run, so we just left it like it. So if you do want to do a run of this game, Sometimes and you want to run it as fast as you possibly can and you do need to complete it so far. It's unfortunate, but just the way it is now. But it is faster, so. You will always find a way to work through it. Also, while we're uh, doing the therapist part, because every chapter is going to kind of like end with a therapist section, uh, so to speak. Um, I see a few people in the chat have already kind of noticed that this uh, game has, I think, real actors to a degree. Uh, I know they, um, the main actress was supposed to be the Hayden... I can never say a surname. Yeah. That's it. However, the funniest part is that the largest actor in this game went on to be Rami Malek, because he won an Oscar for, uh, what's the name, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. But I don't think he was originally meant to be the, uh, like, the so, main star of the game. Like, the main one was definitely, uh, Hayden at the time. Make you feel. Remember, be honest. And also Peter Stormare as well as the uh, the Doctor. He's a very famous actor too. He's fun. I like Peter Stormare. Yeah. Um, also, to, to, to take back to what you mentioned, just there isn't actually a Doctor section at the end of every chapter. Um, later on, you'll you'll find out some things in the game, and when you find out these certain things, then they stop happening um, towards the end of the game. There's a couple of chapters where they're just not there. Right. I remember that at some point they give you uh, like a cutscene kind of like that that doesn't have the choices anymore, but it's just like, hey, here's what's happening. And what if I told you that this cottage yeah. was haunted? So the scarecrow frightens you, and yet you don't appear to be bothered by the possibility of the supernatural. So yeah, um, I've been speaking in this game on and off for since it came out, me. and. You'd be surprised that when I used to run it back in the day when it came out, how many people would be like really, really into it. You know, they'd come and watch the story and that was what they enjoyed and they'd, they'd keep coming back just to watch the game again. And this game does have a lot of memorable moments in it, so it is quite enjoyable to just sit back and relax and watch a game. But it also is a speedrun. I am trying to go as fast as I can. So you might see some things that you didn't know were there or that you could do. Um, and obviously, I'll, I'll try and point. I'll try my best to point out every single thing that I'm doing that that does affect things later on that saves time. Because um, there is a lot of stuff that you do in this game, and obviously, it is a very long game, so I've got plenty of time to go over that. But yeah, this is just the intro. So you get the cool old death song. You listen. Yeah, this is a really really cool song. You, just, you get to listen to this for a little bit, and then listen to Josh talk for a little bit, and then more of this song, and then. We get back into the gameplay. Fun fact, um, the same developers of this also made the, are making the Dark Pictures Anthology, if, if you haven't heard of that, which is um, Man of Medan, Little Hope, and House of Ashes. Um, those are the three that have come out so far. They also used a remixed song, or a remixed version of this song. It's more of a heavy metal rock version in, in, uh, in those games. It's pretty cool. The they seem to really like happened. this song. One year ago tonight, the Washington girls left the safety of their parents. Yeah, the latest game is House of Ashes. It came out, uh, I believe, on the 22nd of October. Is when it came out. It's a pretty good game. 
interesting history with the Washington family. He had warned them against pursuing their construction project and claimed the land was sacred to his forefathers. You know, there is still the old sanatorium on the mountain. Could he be hiding there? My officers did search the grounds, but the girls themselves couldn't have made it that far. Something about that. Anyways, I also love the fact that they're all like, hey, remember how everyone, uh, remember like they died last year? Let's go back. Yeah. It's the perfect horror movie setup. This game literally is a horror film. It is. It's just you, you get to play it out yourself. Well, hello, friends and fans. It's just, this game is, it might not be for everyone, but it is a really good game. And I suggest if you haven't actually played it, but want to play it, then you should play it. I believe it was free with PlayStation Plus um, a couple of years ago. Oh, big thing I completely forgot to mention. The most important thing about the speedrun um, is when this game came out, there was two versions of the game. There was the normal version and then there was the extended edition. Um, these are both two separate discs. You'll know if you've got the extended edition because it will say extended edition on the disc just underneath where it until dawn. Um, to be able to speed on this game the fastest way possible, you, you need the original uh, disc that doesn't have the extended part on it. The extended part um, is a so section with Matt and Emily that plays out minutes. at the end of chapter and, uh, two, which takes about four minutes. If you don't have that, you're going to lose about four minutes. So much um, but there also is, is, is something together. that's and really annoying with this game. Um, I really and I also had to format my PS5 just to run this game. And I'll tell you why. If you even remotely play the extended edition or... If you have the original disc, but update the game, it will give you the DLC. No matter what you do, you will have the extended edition part. Even if you have the normal disc and you update the game, it will be there. If you delete the game, reinstall it as 1.0, don't update it, it will still be there. The only way you can get rid of it is to completely format your console. So, yeah. I made the mistake of trying to play this game on my PS5 and I updated the game. So to run it on PS5, I had to format my PS5 uh, factory reset it. So if you do want to run this game, you need um, a normal copy of the game um, and you need to basically never, ever, ever update it. And the, the, the best way to do that is to just not just turn off the connection to the internet on the console when you put the game in and it, you won't get it. Um, that's something very important. It took me a long time to actually figure out that you have to factory reset the console. I thought it would just be as simple as um, doing some other things, but you know, if you already have it or have had it, you need to do that to, to be able to get rid of it. Also, for uh, if anyone's wondering why the extended version is not going to run, uh, they add a cutscene, I believe, between Emily and Matt. That's like a, a couple minutes or something. Yeah. So you just lose time based on like, oh, here's the director's cut dialogue that kind of shows why these characters are uh, the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because actually uh, after chapter two, if you don't have that extended part, you don't end up, you don't even see them until chapter five. Well, no, actually that's not that's not true. You see them at the end of chapter four. But you don't end up playing up, playing as them until uh, the end of chapter five. Um, so this game added some some things. Uh, there's a thing called a don't move sequence, which will be coming up soon, where you have to basically just hold the controller as still as possible. Um, there'll be some of those that we're going to fail, but some of them that we're actually going to have to do. Um, but it's weird because I don't feel like they 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 took into consideration that you can literally just put your controller on the table and it it's fine. So um, sometimes if you're trying to hold it, the, the controller can just be weird and you will end up it will just fail so the best thing to do is just put it on the con on the table and it'll be fine or anywhere that's flat or it's not going to move so we're going to climb up this the fastest way possible so i have notes for like every single choice that i need to make and every single qt that i need to do as well um and like i said some of them are faster to just mash some of them on um the only ones i won't be mashing is when you're like climbing the big um cliff things there's some in chapter four and then some at the end of the game chapter seven eight and nine i believe there's not many but they are run killers if you fall off one of those walls that you you run's basically dead you're gonna lose too much time yeah i know like there's one part where like you're climbing like a tower and you won't die if you fall but you'll go all the way back down to the bottom of like the tower and climbing the tower is like six qtes or something so on qt5 if you mess that up it's like well yeah. go back to the bottom and do it again Yes, it's, it's really annoying. Also, if you're... Uh, Although... Oh, God. 
Um, on that tower that you're speaking of, that's actually um, in chapter four. Yeah. Um, it's actually faster to fail the first QT and fall off because if you do that, um, you get about a 20 second faster cutscene at the start of chapter five. Very strange how this game works. There's so many tiny little details in this game that you need to know. So if you don't do that and you do that first try and climb up that without failing, you end up getting a 20 second longer cutscene at the start of chapter five. Um, and it took me a long time to figure it out because sometimes I do runs and I'm like, why am I losing time on chapter five? Why is it giving me this cutscene? And then I realized it was because you had to fail in the previous chapter because it's like, it, it simulates real time. So it's like, okay, you fail in the previous chapter. Um, so then when you get to the next chapter, the guy who was walking into the sanatorium is actually going to be in a different spot because you, you failed. It's, this game is very in depth in the way it works. I think my favorite part is going to be like, um, there's gonna be sections where like, oh, you have to hit every QTE or else something really bad is gonna happen to a character. And then it's gonna be faster to just fail everything. So it's gonna seem like hit every single bush, hit every twig, and it's like the world's worst hero. No. And I am excited for that part, I love it. Now we get to do some, uh, some shooting in a sec. You're gonna see my terrible lane probably. Um, you can actually pre-aim at them if you know where they're going to be, like, like hold the stick towards them. Um, but my memory's terrible, so I don't do that. But it, so it's it's not that much slower to just wait, like, to, to see where it's going to be. I'm not going to tell you. You got to see for yourself. Come on, it's this way. Oh, now we're playing as Chris. Oh, no, we're not playing as Chris yet. We're playing as Chris when we start doing the shooting. I, I do play this game. I do remember these things. Um, it's weird. If you play this game in, with a high brightness setting, um, there's so much glare, but if you play it with a, the Pretty default rare, brightness right? setting, there's some things that are really, really dark, so... You kind of, kind of can't win, but I've just got them on default, because the glare's, like, really weird, and it makes, like, these big balloon shapes around every character. It's really weird. What the hell is a shooting range doing at the base of a ski lodge? Uh, dude, have you ever met Josh's dad? Yeah. He thinks he's, like, Grizzly Adams or something. Wanna try? Um, there is a really good, funny QT that you can fail in Chapter 4 where you basically just run into a tree. There is that, that does happen and you like, it close lines you and it's really funny, but it's actually slower to do that, so I won't be failing that one. Oh, uh, hello. That was weird. Um, so right here, it's going to give you the option to, uh... Oh, it's not going to do it yet. It's, uh, after this, I've got to do one more shot, and then it'll do it. So it's going to give the option to shoot a scroll. Um, you don't want to do that, because it's slower. But also, if you do end up shooting a the scroll, then Sam ends up getting a cut on her face, which lasts for the entire game, if you didn't know. Um, very interesting things. Little tiny details like that, that, that change stuff. I don't actually know if that drastically changes anything, but I do know she gets a cut on her face if you shoot that scroll. Wait, I'm just getting the hang of this. I remember correctly as well, I think it might have some bearing on a choice if you're trying to save everyone where it makes one of the QTs harder, or if it like, changes one of the QTs. Uh, it's something about you no, just not the nature. Every single QT, every single QT is always the same. They never change. Um, nothing in this game changes. There's no RNG. It's all. Well, it's I mean, all it might lock, I think it might as long lock as you, you out of like a uh, like a choice kind of thing. Not correctly. Oh. I think the choice is you disturb the nature, so nature is not kind to you during a moment. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. I know there's a moment. Um, it's been a while balance, since I've and I think it affects, played this game um, normally. Wow. Uh, uh, it's one that affects Matt. If I remember correctly. He said they found people sleeping in the station one time. That's crazy. Probably to do with the yeah. deers then. I think that's what that affects as well. But I could be wrong. For you. Oh, real gentleman. Also, another weird thing, um, just to kind of uh, playing kind of the game mechanics of chat, is um, the game will actually have on the pause menu, like, oh, here's the butterfly effect and what everything affects. And then when you uh, go to the end of the game, you can kind of see what led you to those choices. Also, I love the uh, yeah. speed tech right there. You just enter the room and then you immediately leave it. Um, I, I just do that to turn the camera around. I don't actually know if you need to go in there or not. Also, we can look at uh, Chris's beautiful face. You can ask him some questions. Like, should you follow Matt Matt on Twitch? Yeah. 
Yes. You're gonna publish? You're pretty Oh, we have one. Uh, we have the answer in chat as well. Uh, Sam's cut makes it so she uh, gets caught during the psycho chess automatically. Oh, I see. Now I'm wondering how that affects that. Probably. Sm I don't actually know. That's weird. Oof, I had a good neck crack. Oh, so this game does have some jump scares in it. Um, it's up to you whether you want me to pre-warn you when they're coming or just let them go and then scare you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's up to the chat. I, 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 I could tell you when they're going to come up because some of them are actually quite uh, scary if you've never played the game. But there's not that many. It's only a couple, maybe like three or four, I think. But yeah, there is there is a bunch of categories for this game um, on speedrun.com. You have any percent, and you've got um, all survivors. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Whatever one survive. I don't actually remember the category name. And then you've got a platinum percent. Yeah. Good talk. And the hand hundred percent as well. You know what? Let's just let's just stop talking about what happened and enjoy the trip. You know how Josh and I met? No. Third grade. Josh sat in the back of the room. I sat in the front. We didn't even know each other. Existed. I'm seeing a lot of people that want the jump scares and for me to not warn when they're coming. So the teacher made him move to the front where I was sitting. Luckily, with this game, none of the jump scares I think are too overtly uh, cheap or bad. And next to Josh. Yeah, there is one that's like. Mm, it's kind of cliche. It's just but that one probably is the most scary because you can't. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's going to come, but not really. Um, but most of them are not too bad. I mean, who knows? You could be riding in this cable car alone. I'm actually quite surprised there's not more jump scares in this game than there is. Butterfly effect. Um. Yes, yeah, so now we're gonna meet uh, Jessica. I don't like. <laughs> I also find it really funny that if anyone's played this game, you'll see something coming up soon. I will, I will point it out when it comes up, but it, it is actually quite amusing. Um. So this, uh, here is another example of a dialogue choice that's only faster because it's faster. Um, so this one that I'm going to do doesn't actually change anything in the game, it's just faster to pick it. Um, there's quite a lot that are just faster to pick them um, because they're just faster to play out than, than the other one. Um, also, if you didn't know, most of the choices in this game are either left or right. But you can, on the odd occasion, have one that's like up or down. Um, and it's funny because chapter one has two choices where you do either up or down. Um, and then I don't think there's a single one in the rest of the game, especially in this route, until... I don't know. I can't think of another one. But I know there's two in this chapter. And it's very rare that you see any more other than that. Yeah, like if you could skip the cutscenes in this game, like every single cutscene and every single part where you pick a choice, it would this run would be like maybe 30, 40 minutes. You mean Mike? What? I mean, you know. Yeah, this funny, this this fun. This game is not fun to grind, just because of how long it is and there's a lot of downtime. If you love this game, you love the story, and you love watching the cutscenes and. Great, you could probably really enjoy grinding this, but if you don't... Also, this is really funny. Right here, it comes up and says that Emily, one of her traits, is intelligent. She is not intelligent. She's the best character. 
No, she is not. <laughs> she is the worst character. I, I, I had other of my arguments on the worst character, but it's not only. She, she is the actual definition of a girl boss, and we love her for that. Getting well, she's the only one that's actually useful in the band now, because you remember how I said that it was a new skin? Okay, see? Uh, you do it with, with her. But I still don't like her. Well, she's a girl boss. Jesus! Right, so, all right, so first important choice of the, of the run right here. So we need to... We need to basically assert our dominance with Mike um, because we need to do something soon with him in the large that's going to save a lot of time. Um, so if you played this game, most of the time if you played this game, you're going to have ended up seeing Jessica and Emily have a massive fight and shout at each other in the large. Well, we want to be as angry as we can at Mike as Matt. Um, because then Matt and Mike can have a little fight. But all that fight entails is a headlock, and then they get separated, and it saves about 40 seconds over the other, other fight. So we need to assert our dominance. Also explain more on the... But yes, um, I was just going to say that this game is not just a, a, a walking dialogue cutscene simulator. We will be doing a skip. It is a new skip that's only been found by me about a week ago. I'm, ex I'm excited to show it off. Um, but we will be doing a glitch skip that saves about a minute later on also um it's not for a while yet though random fun fact i see it in the what? chat because i know i brought this up when i streamed this game um so matt's wearing a letterman okay. jacket Sorry, and uh, very often you know it's the whole totally thing forgot. like after you graduate high school you have the letterman to celebrate really your accomplishments of the year and the thing about letterman jacket is you're supposed to put the sport you lettered in on like the sleeve matt's a liar he has no letters he just bought a jacket it's so important i guess i can yeah i think that is that is mentioned um, I think Emily hints at the fact that it's not an actual jacket that he earned. He just That's bought it. That's because Emily's intelligent. <laughs> no, she isn't. <laughs> no, no. Also, um, to elaborate more on why Matt, um, you know, being the alpha, being wanting to threaten Mike saves time. Uh, if they get along, what ends up happening is you always need a catalyst to kind of separate the characters, so the game will kind of force it into another catalyst that takes longer. So you just kind of cause one early with Matt, it's much faster. Yeah, also here is actually the only one that's going to survive this speedrun, so get used to her. Oh, I forgot what I was doing there. I like her trait that she has a crush oh, on Chris. Hello. What a powerful trait. Somebody's getting a little friendly. I was I was holding the the button to like select the choice then. I forgot that I had to move the telescope. I'm pretty good speaking. It's very it's, it, believe it or not, but it actually is quite hard to run this game while trying to talk. Also, yeah, jump scare. It is quite hard to, to play this game while you're trying to talk because you have to always have in your head, okay, what choice is next? Where is it going to be? And I'm trying to think about that while also trying to explain what I'm doing. Man, um, really sorry, so yeah, that's it's why I messed up then, because I was trying to select the choice before it even showed up. Uh, yeah, so we need to, now. right here, we need to show, let Matt look through the telescope. Um, and that's going to get him even more angry at Mike. As you can see, when I selected that choice, a bunch of butterflies go on the screen, because that is a, a butterfly effect. Um, if you didn't do this, then Matt won't be even be angry with Mike and the Lodge, and he won't even trigger any sort of dialogue with them. You have to do this one to get them to talk, and then have a little fight. Also, the fight is actually really hilarious because it looks so dumb. Matt. Now we're going to do uh, the snowball fight scene. It's pretty fun. It's not. Just we just mash some buttons. We can also we can actually aim the snowballs though, so we get to do something. <laughs> Yeah, so this is one of the examples where mashing the QT as fast as possible is faster. You will see right here when she runs, I'm going to mash the button and you will see that it will, as soon as I press it, it will instantly swap scenes. This is one example where it is faster to just mash it. Right there, I pressed it and it instantly swapped to the next scene. The favorite part about this is that uh, Mike wasn't expecting uh, his new girlfriend to have a bionic arm in the snowball fight. Oh, ah, hi. Hey. Oh, snap. 
Oh, sorry, here's another. I guess he's kind of with a toilet. It's like, okay, sometimes it's better to do nothing, which it is. Um, if you want to die a lot of the time. Hey, Mike. Oh, okay. You got me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's this little bird. It's actually better to not throw it at it. Um, because even in the script, it actually is that is actually faster, so we just leave it. And here's another instance of um, a dialogue choice being up or down. Also, get ready for some kissy kissy because it ex it is actually faster to make them kiss. So sorry. <laughs> calling it my favor then your worthy opponent miss jessica the snowball queen okay that sounds vaguely dirty my lady um so that's pretty much the end of chapter one um wow. we're going to see the doctor Save next and he's going to make us basically pick our fears um the these line. fears yeah do I actually change what happens in the game but it doesn't really affect like I mean, the actual game the way it pans out it just affects certain things that happen so if you you know pick you the you're afraid of cockroaches or something like that then it will show cockroaches in the doctor's section um but if you pick that you're afraid of zombies um you might have noticed when you play through this game um there's bodies or like fake bodies i guess i don't know there's, there's sometimes you see bodies these bodies will look a certain way um depending on i think i believe in chapter i don't remember what chapter it was but you see ha sam's clothes hanging up on someone else's body if you pick zombies it'll be a zombie if you pick clowns it'll be a clown it just it, it doesn't really affect what happens it just affects what you see um so you'll see things in the in um like the office as well here one thing you can also do if you didn't know if you if you pick you are scared of zombies throughout the game dr hill's face will start to turn into a zombie um he'll get cuts on him and later on in the game he'll start to like go all like you know decrepit and he'll turn into a zombie um yeah if you didn't know that that's something pretty interesting i think i believe it only happens like the only thing that affects him is when you select zombies so for all these i'm going to select right apart from the last one um because you get a different dialogue um the last one it will ask you whether you're scared of dogs or thunderstorms um selecting dogs is just slightly faster because he, he says a short word also this actor is peter stormare for the uh the guy who's the therapist i think he's swedish yeah yeah and he's been in a lot of stuff he also, I believe he also did the, uh, the commercials for Black Ops 2 and a couple of other Call of Duty games before they came out. Well, it might, it might have been Black Ops 2, I don't remember which is the first one he did, but I do remember that. Oh. Did I start with you? I'm so sorry. You do oh yeah, and you played Lucifer in Constantine, very good film if you haven't watched that. you speed up a bit the more you rely on your instincts the more honest your answers will be and the more enlightening you will find this experience yes yeah, so you pick zombies here and that changes uh the way that pans out then we pick dogs, and then we're going to pick dogs again. Because it's just slightly faster. This is very interesting. Thank you for answering so. Um, and our chapter two, which is coming up, is probably the longest chapter in the game. One of the longest chapters in the game. I believe it's like half an hour. Pretty long. 
the sub combination sounds like a good Friday night. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm afraid once again we're out of time, but I promise we'll talk again very soon. Um, so at the end of every chapter, you get a uh, previously on until dawn section because it kind of plays out like a TV series, I guess. Um, so at the end of this 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 episode, now we get to see what we've already watched. Gives it gives us a little uh, Don't you guys think this is a recap. Oh, come on, she deserves it. Hannah! Um, these usually all take around a minute, every single one. And there's one at the end of every chapter. Also a good uh, recap, because the game didn't expect you to um, go through the whole uh, campaign or go through the whole story in four hours. So they kind of expected yeah. you, may, oh hey, you did a chapter per night, oh here's what you missed from last time, just in case you need a refresher, which <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah. We'll never forget. I don't think they had the uh, the speedrunner in mind. Take my sisters. I need to go find Sam. Son of a bitch. So I got moved to the back. And next to John. I don't think they expected anyone to speedrun this game. Um, there is actually uh, a lot of skips that you can do in this game. They just don't work. This game is very heavily tied to triggers, and like right here. For example, right here, you can actually use the stairs because this game has a glitch where you can clip using right, stairs. And you can clip true. using these stairs and get into the house early. When you and when you hit the loading trigger, the game just crashes. It just soft locks and it freezes. Um, and there's a, a later section where you can skip the entire sanatorium. Um, but when you play at the final scene, the game just, uh, it just again, stay, it's, it, when, the, when it fades to black after the section, it just stays at a black screen. So a lot of skips you can do in this game, they just don't work, which is sad. But at least I managed to find one that did work, but it's just so small. But it still saves about a minute, but that's not till chapter seven. So we've got a ways to go to, you're gonna see that. So again, these, these dialogue choices here are just uh, faster because they're faster to play out. They don't actually affect anything, I don't think. got his hands full, you know what I mean? Damn it, it's a freaking thing. It's iced. What else? Maybe there's another way in. There are a million ways in, they're just all locked. There's gotta be like a window around the corner we can get like, get open or something. Wait a second, are you saying we should break in? Also, fun fact. I don't think it's technically it is actually... Quarter to four in the morning for me. Um, <laughs> and I've had to literally flip my sleep schedule just to do this run. I'm not end up going to bed till like seven when it's finished. So I, I'm a little bit tired, a little bit tired. I'm not too bad, but I might be tired later on. It's just this game's awkward to play if you're tired because there's just there's not a lot going on. You know, you're doing a heavily intense speedrun with loads of glitches and skips and all that. Man, what you're telling me is you're going to be playing this game until dawn. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be playing That's until dawn, until dawn. Today, right? It's going to be great. It's perfect. It's like perfect timing. You, you did this on purpose. I, I know it. I, I just like, uh, I've been called an opportunist in that degree. <laughs> I'm not seeing some of the best dialogue in the game. There's, Josh has some pretty funny dialogue in this game. That he says, and coming up is is one of these funny dialogues. Um, so one thing that I'm going to mention that I do specifically is whenever you have to move something, you have to like move the right stick in a certain direction. Um, but the fastest way to do it, whether it's just grabbing something or moving something while holding R2, the fastest way to do it is just to spin the stick as fast as you can. Um, then trying to like mash in the direction that it needs to go. So, I'll just do that. Oh, I'm okay. Should have paid more attention in climbing class. Yeah, so I'm gonna try my best to um, be as lively as I can for these next four hours. Well, three now. That's actually like kind of flawed. First hour is actually now. not gonna lie, quite literally flown so. by. I kind of just realized it's been an hour. Use this. Yeah, nearly. 
I shouldn't finish under like I shouldn't finish over 350. I should. This game's consistent oh, enough that as long as the skip goes idea. okay, I should be yeah. finishing around like totally. uh, maybe okay. like so, three. 47, 348, so we've got about three hours left, so I'm going to try my best to be as live as I can for the rest of them. Um, but there is an issue with the skip that can happen where if I get stuck, I might have to uh, restart the game, and the game takes a long time to boot up, because in this game, you can't quit to the main menu. The, the main menu is integrated into the pause menu. So you can't quit out, and you can't restart checkpoints, none of that. So if I fail a skip, the skip, I have to literally just close the game and reopen it. something out. You up for hunting around in the dark for a little bit? Nope, but I'll do it. Godspeed! Godspeed, Pilgrim. That's some good dialogue, by the way. There's some pretty good lines in this game. So now we're just going to uh, go get a can of deodorant and flame throw the lock. Um, so there's a lot of movement in here that we're going to be doing. Probably the most movement you've seen in the entire run so far is going to be right here. How much time does the skip save? It saves about a minute if done well. Um, it's not actually that hard to do, but uh, it can be kind of finicky. And if you don't do it well, you're not really saving much time. But it saves about a minute if it's done well. Um, also, this game on PS5 actually saves a lot of time over PS4. Also jump scare. This this game saves a lot of time um, over PS4 on PS on PS5 because this game, believe it or not, on PS4 is very laggy and the low frame rate makes the game just run really slowly. So playing it on PS5 at 60 FPS actually saves a lot of time just because the game runs better. That's mainly it. In a game like this where you're literally just watching cutscenes and moving, stuff like that saves a lot of time. And it's very evident. Sweet. Um, when I literally did my first run on PS5 with splits and I ended up saving 17 seconds on chapter one when usually I, I don't even save time on chapter one. It saves a lot of time. So you're telling I think me that I can have top three in Until Dawn and buy a PS5? Yes. That's selling point for the PS5. <laughs> um... Yeah, like, sub, sub, sub 350 on, on PS5 is literally free. Um... Cause I, I believe even without the skip, even without the skip, you can probably get like a, a 48 um, or 47, should I say. Um, I believe the PS5, just playing on PS5 on its own saves about two minutes over PS4 Pro. So here's what I was talking about. Matt's not happy with that big boy Mike. And we're going to have a little fight. Make yourself at home, bro. Will do. Yeah. Come on in. Take a load off. Have whatever you want. You just take whatever you want anyway, right? Uh, so yeah, this scene that's going to play out is a, is a bit faster than Matt and, and uh, Emily and Jessica fighting. It's like 40 Mike, seconds. Stay away from my girlfriend. Dude, what are you talking about? Stay away from Emily. So you Emily, can't trigger this scene unless you look Emily? through the telescope. So now we're going to now we're going to attack him. I'm gonna put him in a headlock, and that's gonna be it. And this fight looks really dumb. Really a vicious attack. It looks like two two kids that are like ten just like fighting each other. <laughs> I wonder what the plan was there. Is he just gonna keep him in a headlock? Is he gonna? I'm actually not sure what his plan was. And just go check out the guest cabin. It's a shame that we'll uh, we'll never find out. Oh, yeah, cool. Wanna head up there? Sure. But yeah, so, so I like how then Matt just casually comes over to Joss and is like, yeah, should we get this fire Where going? Like that never happened. Huh? My bag, the, the little bag with the pink pattern, the one I got on Rodeo. Matt, are you, are you listening? 
Oh my god, don't you remember next to the Italian Yeah, triggering the scene is about 40 seconds faster and you knocked over the raft than uh, letting Emily and Jessica have a little she argument. Was asking about my letter jacket. Right, because she gave a shit about your Like literally in this game, jacket. unless you know about jacket? certain no, choices you need to make, oh god, you're going to lose a lot of time. Um, for example, in the, when I said previous that so there's, there's choices that we're going to be making in Chapter 2 that are again going to end up affecting Chapter 3. Um, in this section coming up with Mike and Jessica, we need to make Mike do certain cho certain choices and make Mike do certain things to enable Jessica in the little cabin to get right into her bra and underwear. Now listen, before you say anything... <laughs> if you don't do that, sh sh Jessica is not happy with Mike, and she makes him work for it. And then you have to do stuff to make her get into her bra and underwear. But if you do specific choices before you even get to the cabin, she'll just get it into the straight away. And that saves about a minute and a half, I believe. It saves a lot of time. There's so many little details in this game that you need to know, pick, to, to allow things to happen. My favorite thing to tell people lately whenever I have to explain a weird strat is, I assure you it is absolutely necessary to the speedrun that this must happen. That's a pretty good way to put it. Is, it is, because lately uh, I learned a new game recently. Uh, it's unrelated to this game, but the strategy is you have to get the character in their underwear because it makes them swim faster, and you lose a bunch of time if you don't do it. Like, the character will move, like, let's say 100% movement speed regular. If you don't do it, they move it, like, 10% movement speed. That's actually pretty yeah, funny. like, it's, it's mandatory, and you have to do it. Okay, you want to invite him up with us? Wait, really? Oh, well, it could just be an excuse, you never know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do assure you that it is very, very mandatory to get Jessica in her bra and underwear as fast as possible. But that's not going to happen for a, a while yet, because but we need to do things here to allow that to happen. something I can help you with. And how are you going to do that? Well, first, we've got to turn on the power for the generator so we can uh, get some lights on so we can see where we're going, apparently. Because it's dark out there, according to Josh. Even though we have a flashlight. Yeah, the movement in this area is very annoying, or it can be very annoying. Um, these, these like, paths are very narrow, and it's kind of easy to get stuck. And in this game, if you touch a wall, even remotely, while you're walking, you'll just stand still. And it's very annoying. So you want to try your best to avoid doing that. And also, in, in a lot of sections, it's pretty much impossible to get ahead of your AI companion, and this is one of them. And it's very easy to get stuck. But in some, like Chapter 5, for example, it actually is faster to get ahead of Emily, but it's actually quite hard to do. But it only says a couple of seconds. Which I have tried to skip, never been successful in doing it. But it would be very nice if you could, because this part's quite long. I, I, maybe I have a feeling that you can't actually skip sections that have choices in them. 
And this one also does have choices in them, but not not a lot. It's got one, hey, I think, right here. Yeah, this game um, added a lot of a lot of choice games like Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain and uh, stuff like that. This game is probably the easiest to platinum. Um, it's pretty easy platinum to do if you want to go for it. Doesn't take too long. This game is not on PC. No. This game is only on PlayStation. I imagined us grunting together. This is not what I pictured. <laughs> so again, there's going to be a QT here, but it's not actually faster to mash it. But I just mash it anyway because why not? You might, sometimes I mash it so fast you don't even see it come up. Like sometimes you do see it pop up, but sometimes you don't. Um, so if you're trying to learn the speedrun of this game from watching someone's run, there might be QTEs that you don't even see me press because dude, I just press them so fast it doesn't even show up. Um, it's actually quite funny. My run from a couple of years ago, um, I actually had someone comment on my run saying that it was spliced and I segmented it just because I pressed something too fast. It was actually back there, the cart that you move. If you move it quick enough, it kind of cuts to one scene and then straight back to another one and they thought I'd splice the run. And I'm just I'm like, well, clearly you don't know how the game works. <laughs> and also, why would you want to segment and cheat a run of this game? when <laughs> It's so straightforward, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't think this place is up to code. Yeah, I'm thinking it's time to go. Yeah, so right here you you walk really slow. You you can't really get ahead of her. Um and she you'll end up stopping and starting a lot. It's really infuriating doing this part. Thankfully I haven't stood still yet. Oh, there we go. He stood still for no reason. <clears throat> um, so yeah, um, there's going to be a choice coming up soon where we're going to get scared by a, um, a bird, I think. And you have to pick the flirt. I think it's either like flirty or witty option. I don't remember which one it's called. Um, but you have to pick that. Um, in order to progress into getting her in a bar and underwear. Um, there's a couple of choices like that that we have to make, and there's a couple of things we have to do to in order to, to make it work. Yeah, so that, that, that choice has come up here in a second. I believe it's... I believe it's flirting. I think the, the next choice is with you, but that won't happen until chapter three. Oh, and he stopped it again. Nothing there. Watch out, bird brain. Oh, it's a witty. That one's a witty. Okay. Just answering you, maybe. Wow, you're easy. Yeah. Got a lot of love for you. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, also, there's a lot of things you have to do where you have to, like, turn stuff in this game. Um, and if you uh, try and turn it, sometimes it just won't work. Most of the stuff that you can spin or turn is very, very easy to do, but some of them are really finicky. 
and if you're trying to turn it and it's just not working, it's costing you time and it's very annoying. And one of those is in chapter three, and one's in chapter three, and one's in chapter six. Stand back, Debbie Downer. And they just sometimes just don't work. Is Emily dead yet? No, sadly, she's not. Yes. Not yet, anyway. So this is the last section of chapter two, but this section is actually quite long. It takes a good couple of minutes to uh, get through. Come on. And this is also Are gonna be the chapter where we're gonna fail our first QTE. It saves about a second or two over actually completing it. Like some of the stuff is actually faster to just fail them than actually complete them. Not by much, but it is. But some stuff you have to fail in order for major things to happen, like someone dying. Wink, wink. Not yet, though. I don't believe anyone actually dies until chapter six, so. This should also be mentioned with the, uh, with the deaths. The reason why we, well, it's obviously mentioned by people in chapter talking, like, oh, who's gonna die, who's gonna live. Um, ideally, killing characters means you don't have to play as those characters anymore, and very often the game will have scripts. So, um, let's say, um, that the character is only the only character in a certain script it skips it entirely if the character is no longer alive a uh, good example is in the end game there's a special chapter that only unlocks if you saved one or two people so if both of people are dead you just don't have to do it and it'll immediately go to the next uh, section of gameplay yeah th th those two people you're referring to is, uh, is matt and jessica um if if other of those survive then they'll be in this uh, mine at the end of the game right. But if they're both dead, it never plays out, so it saves a lot of time. Having and it's a long dead. section too, so getting both of them killed saves yeah. a lot of time. Well, actually, if they're both alive, I believe it is, but if only Jessica's alive and you play out that section, you can get her killed with, like, within like a minute. It's it's not that long, I think, if she's just alive, but I just, I'm, my, my memory on that, is that, on that is hazy because it's been a long time. But I believe that section is pretty short. Um, but obviously, it still saves a lot of time not having to do it. Yeah, I was thinking they could use some alone time. And I just wish Chris would go for it. He's so paralyzed, thinking she's going to shoot him down. It's not going to happen. Which thing? Well, neither. If he doesn't go for it, which knowing Chris, he won't unless someone... I'm trying to, like, to actually, text. like, concentrate on making sure that I'm on the right spot in my notes. Usually when I run this game, I'm just sitting here quietly, so it's easy to know where I am. Yes, but obviously, I'm trying to explain and talk a lot, and <laughs> it's distracting me remembering what part I'm at. Um, because believe you could probably run this game knowing every single choice and QT off by heart, but that's a lot of a lot of stuff you got to remember. So I have them all written down. Really, whatever you need, whenever. We're all gonna make it through this. So right here, you can actually get ahead of Josh as well. Um, I want us to have a good time, um but it's know. kind of awkward to do. You have to like walk into the right spot. Like there, I got stuck on him and it didn't work. Hey, watch your step. I think I can handle a little set of stairs. That's kind of slow. Also, the movement in this game can sometimes be really funky and you'll be trying to turn, but it just won't. This, the, the, the movement in this game is very weird. Like, from a casual perspective, you probably wouldn't even notice, but in the, in the speed run, it's very annoying sometimes. So now I'm just going to put the controller down because um, we're going to get... I think this is the last do not 
move sequence we're actually going to do um because you have to do this one but this one's actually the longest i believe one of the longest you have to hold it still for a really long time here um but if you fail this then you have to then do it again to it so yeah but this is the last one we're gonna do after this we're gonna fail all the rest that we get but it is quite long i mean it's a good like what nice one 20 seconds 15 20 seconds that and that's a long time to stay still, especially if you're okay, just playing the game first, we got to increase the water pressure before we get the boiler fired up mm, sounds kind of complicated no, it's actually pretty simple So we wait and then as soon as the light goes red press it and then it's faster here to actually high five josh instead of missing him you can just leave him hanging and it looks funny but it's a little bit faster to do the high five Joshing you. <laughs> oh, you were really freaked out. I was not scared. No, no, you just jumped because you wanted to squeeze in some aerobics. Oh my god. You were totally freaked out too. What? <laughs> no. As white as a sheet. No, no, come on. I've been. Uh, so we're gonna uh, pick, pick being heroic here. I mean, um, because it lets us uh, go and investigate the sound. Which is obviously faster. Josh. What? I was just like weirdly regular. Not, not, nothing regular about it. I'm gonna go check it out. What? Why? <laughs> you care, Brady face. No, no it's, it's probably just like not anything. Uh, why don't you hold down the floor? Well, I make sure. Whatever you say, madam. And yeah, we're gonna fail our first QT here just by mashing X, as I stated before. There is not a single QT bound to the X button, so we can just mash X whenever we want to fail one. And now we're basically, just, we've got no more gameplay in this chapter now. We just kind of wait and watch these cutscenes. Although we do have some choices to pick in the doctor section. Some of the some of the doctor sections have choices that you have to select and some of them don't. Nice one. That was good. Wait, but why would you do that? There's all this cool old movie crap down here. What was I was I not supposed to take? Um also uh, what is from the chat fun fact. Are you serious? Um this game Were you in on this has had a has had a lot of iterations. This game was originally being developed for the playstation 3 and it was going to be a move playstation move title um, um and the, the story i believe was a little bit different and then they basically made pretty much the entire game the way it is now on ps3 which i believe i don't believe it was meant to use move still at that point but then this this was quite late into the ps3's life cycle and I believe that at the last mm -hmm. minute they basically made the decision to um, postpone the game <laughs> okay, and okay, remake it for the PlayStation 4. And they actually then hired proper actors to play the characters, which was not the case previously. Um, if you want to see stuff to do with that, just search on, on YouTube, like uh, Until Dawn PS3 uh, gameplay, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This game is very, very different. Um, I'm kind of glad they, they waited to, to release it on PS4 instead of releasing it on PS3. It's like how we're hitting the, uh, the point of the game where uh, the therapist office is starting to get a bit more dingy and kind of beat up. Yeah. Yeah, so look, look, as you can see, there's a spider 
in that little glass jar because we selected that we were scared of spiders. Um, I believe if you selected the other choice, then the other thing would also be in that jar. He has a lot of little details like that. I think as well, um, one of the parts, it's like, what, rats or roaches, I think is an option. And there's like a dead body and it's like, oh, it's covered in rats. Oh, because you're terrified of rats. Here you go. Let us investigate your feelings toward yeah. other people. There's also a body in chapter five that you pull out of uh, in a morgue thing and a rat comes out of its mouth. I'm not sure if you selected the choice of a cockroach comes out of its mouth or not or whatever it is, I don't know. I just know that a rat comes out of his mouth. most important in a person? Loyalty or honesty? So, you would tell the truth, even if it resulted in an unpleasant outcome. The run is live. However, chat is pure recorded. All the runs on GEQ tend to be live, so they're happening as you see them. Such a giving and caring person. No. But as always, chat is pre recorded. I always have to get that at least once. Once again, I'm afraid we're out of time. So the real question then, Talk so if guys. Emily's your least favorite, who's your favorite character? Oh, I quite like Mike. I think Mike's pretty good. Or Josh, one of those two. Fair choices. It's weird in this game, I actually you prefer pretty much right all here. the guys to all the girls. I just think the girls are really annoying <laughs> in this game. I Today see some of the point, like, these are the, the characters that I just think some of them on the, the guy side get more fleshed out. Like, I'm, I'm gonna say right now, Jess mean, isn't even fleshed out, she's so in like two chapters. And that we're, we're all still here yeah, and then basically, if she, if even if you save her, she still doesn't appear then until the end of the game, so... However, likely the best character we all know the proper answer to. Hey, hey, get off me! Hey. It's not Emily. <laughs> well, it should be. <laughs> Hey, Mike, why don't you no. and Jess go check Emily out? Emily is the worst. I definitely make a case for her, though, because I tell you all the time that of all the characters, she has the most depth, which is more interesting. Like, I don't like Sam wearing? because Sam There's is just, oh, I have zero flaws and I am, you know, save the cheerleader. Because, you know, she was the top billing actress, so her character is quite literally perfect. Kind of like Mike. But with Emily, you have, like, an actual character behind it, which is nice. To communicate with the spirit world, you must free your mind. Yeah. yeah. Conceptions, drop all inhibitions, and generally give yourself over entirely to the will of others, sublimating your every desire to the whims of the Also, hey, master, look, it's the picture I got for Twitter. And all present will remove their oh, comments yeah. at my sole discretion. Chris, come on, this is serious. <laughs> I'm deadly serious. <laughs> oh, shush it. Let's try this. Yes, please. Okay, then. Let's see what happens. So we did this part, we just select a bunch Actually, of choices. Yeah, and again, these choices don't affect anything prior. I mean, anything uh, later in the game, okay. it's just whatever's faster um, in, in this section here. Is anyone there? Will you reveal yourself to us if you're there? <laughs> Wait a minute, did you do that? I didn't do anything. It's moving again. <laughs> H? What's it spelling? Hold on. How's this happening? Are you moving it? I swear, it's just moving. Holy shit. Help? How are we supposed to help? I don't know. What does it mean? We need to know who it is if we're supposed to help them. Who are you? And again, for the next choice, it's going to ask oh, to pick goes. or to ask S if it's either Hannah or Beth. And obviously, Beth is a shorter word, so that's slightly faster. Sister? Sister? Whose sister? Oh, come on. Is this for real? Shut up. Ask it whose sister. Josh, it's, it's got to be. Yeah. OK, well, which sister is it then? Ashley, ask who it is. Who are we speaking to? Beth? Is that you? Oh, god. <laughs> this is messed up. Josh, are you fine? Are you sure? Because we can stop. No, dude, it, it's cool. I want to hear what it says. I, um, I should also point out that whenever we do kill it, characters it, in the run, that will be the point, which is as soon as you can happened. kill them. Obviously, if you could kill them sooner, it would save more time, uh, but there is no way to kill them sooner. Like, no one will die. Well, actually, I we say no know. one dies until chapter what six. That's a lie. Um, no one dies until chapter four. 
Don't know why I said six. I forgot about Jessica. That's how one important she is to me, but she dies in four. After that, no one dies till six. I don't know why I forgot about that. What's she talking about? I don't know if I can keep doing this. We have to. Just, just, just stay calm. I, I think it's saying that someone killed Hannah. I don't know. I just a ask it something else. All right. Yeah, that's the end of that section now. Just a couple of choices we have to make Hannah. and just m watch Who it out. Um, but next no. we're we're getting up to the the good part where we get we get Jessica in her underwear and bra. So that's coming up soon. Oh, oh, we gotta get oh, to the cabin proof. first. There, there's, there's proof. In the <gasps> Holy shit, Chris! You know what? No, this is bullshit. This isn't real. Josh, I don't know what's going on. Listen, I don't know. I don't know if you think messing with me is somehow going to help me deal with my grief or whatever, but this is not cool. Josh, no. You wanted to use the Nobody important dies until I chapter six. Yeah, that's correct. Right now, okay? Although I wouldn't really call the person that dies in chapter six important either, but no. Ah, man. I mean, he'll be okay. Let's, let's just give him some time. I don't blame him. That was crazy. The pointer flew right off the table. I mean, if, if you were faking it, if you were doing one hell of a job. I wasn't faking anything. I think we should do what it says. We should look in the library. Oh no, Jess is screaming, whatever we do, we gotta go and save her. I won't murder you. Oh! Oh, my oh, my God. God. No. oh terrifying. <laughs> that was so good. No. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Also, again, another choice here that will affect her getting into a bra and underwear. Pretty much most of the choices you make with Jessica in Chapter 2 and 3 do actually count towards that, that you need to actually select them. I can tell my pants are still on. Oh, is that so? Yeah, looks like you have to try harder. A challenge, eh? You're strapped in because you're about to feel the full force of my mind melting thrill skills. Um, yeah, there is totems in this game that you can pick up that will show you future events that can happen. Um, but obviously it's slow to pick any up, so we won't be doing that. Um, but the one that you saw in chapter one was forced. Um, you have to pick that up as like the tutorial. I don't really like many of the characters in this game. I think they're all annoying. <laughs> Which I guess maybe is a good thing while I'm speedrunning it and getting them all killed. They try their best. If I was to say which character like whines the most, it would have to be Ashley. Ashley just loves to whinge and moan and cry and scream and it's, it's very annoying. And of course she's the one that lives the entire game, so 
Nothing you can do about that. Such is life. Well, we actually have a pretty good question in chat right now. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so with routing a game like this, um, obviously you have to go through like each and every choice and see how long they are. How long does it really take to like analyze? Oh, going left here is faster. Oh, failing this QZ is faster, and all that. Um, it takes a lot. I mean, a lot of the stuff I came up with, um, I was the first one to run this game when it came out. Um, so I had like a basic round. I think my first run of this game was about, I believe it was four hours and 38 minutes. Obviously you can tell a lot of times we've been cut down since then, but that was a run that didn't really have any, you know, round. I just kind of played the game. Um, but I believe most of the, most of the route um, was actually came up uh, came up with by Nems, um, the Dark Souls speedrunner. Um, he ran this at one point and he came up with a lot of the, the choices. Um, I came up with some, but a lot of this route is, is, is his, so I can't really take credit for it. He came up with a bunch of the choices for it, so... But it takes a while. There's a, obviously, there's a lot of choices you have to go through, and there's a lot of outcomes to each choice. Some more QTs here we're going to be doing. Couple, we're going to complete all these, we're not going to find any of them because it's uh, slower to do that. Yeah, like if you want to test the choices, you have to like um, uh, restart the chapter every time or like try and quit the game as fast as possible. Um, See, so yeah, right here, uh, we're just going to grab the key. Um, obviously, you know, you would think that, that grabbing, like, grabbing her would help towards getting yes. her in a brown underwear, but, um, uh, it, with all the stuff that we did throughout the rest of the run, um, the choices we made, we can just about get away with doing that. I think there's, like, like probably, like, an in-game invisible meter that tells you how, like, what you have to do in order to do, to get that to work, and ignoring her and grabbing the keys just about makes it work. So we should be good. As long as you do the same choices and do the same things every time, you'll 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 get it. Things not gonna come barging in. I promise. How can you be sure? Cause I'm pretty sure bears don't know how to open cabin doors. I've seen them open car doors. What? Uh, this does run at 60 on PS5. Yeah. On the internet. Really? Okay. Well, this. I don't think it was unlocked on PS4. Right? But if it was, it ran terribly. No bear or anything else is gonna open that cabin door. Like right. this game on PS4 Pro even ran pretty badly. Okay. So I'm almost feeling relaxed again. Almost. Huh. Typical. Arr. This is not the cozy chalet I was promised, Mike. Yeah, it's a bit drafty or something. Um so remember earlier when I mentioned about um turning some things well, don't work properly. Heat things up. Well in, in a couple Mike, minutes. Um, I'm gonna have to turn a lamp to turn it on and it's very finicky sometimes it just doesn't want to turn on and obviously you know in a game like this if it doesn't work you're losing time it, it can be very costly in a game where you know you're just walking around selecting choices it, every second in this game counts and a run can literally die from something as simple as that you know it's 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 crazy I was going to say as well, because um, I know this game uses the uh, the touchpad at the very least and the motion controls for some of the uh, QTEs. I'm really happy PS4 and I, I'm assuming PS5 motion controls are probably much better than the PS3 ones. Um, I, I know you run the Uncharted games on the PS3, and I don't know how much they have the motion control gimmick in those. But um, one game I ran, Siren um, Blood Curse, actually, like, reloading requires you to shake the controller. Doing anything requires you to, like, massively use the um, motion of the, the uh, DualShock 3, which was just kind of awful. That's wild. Well, un Uncharted 2 and 3 basically dropped the entire six axis uh, motion control thing, but on Uncharted 1, you had to use it to balance. Um, and I think it also had motion controls optional for grenades as well for throwing them, I believe. Um, but in the speedrun for Uncharted 1, you only do it once, and even then, you don't even have to do that because you pretty much skip everywhere else that you would do it. So I've never really had to deal with it, but it is very annoying. I do know one game that has it is uh, Army of Two. It uses um, the flying, the, the gliding also uses that. It's very annoying. Yeah, this right here, I'm, it just sometimes it just won't turn. Very weird. 
But I, leave, but I believe in Army of Two, you can actually turn off the motion controls in that. Man one, five, um, but those motion controls are only in the PlayStation 3 version. If you play Army of Two on the Xbox 360, they're not there. Because obviously Xbox 360 didn't have any motion controls. Also, um, so, I see another question in chat that we probably could have asked earlier. What got you into running Until Dawn? Because obviously this game is long and it's not exactly the most conventional for speed running. But what made you want to do it? I just like the game. I, I, I basically, when this game came out, I'd not long started like getting into speed running. And I'd ran a Last of Us and some other games. And I played this when it came out. and. At the time, I was just kind of running pretty much most things I played. So after I'd finished it, I just kind of did a speed run, and it went from there. And I'm still playing it nearly seven years later for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, I just—it's just I like the game. I just wanted to run it, so I ran it. It's this one. This one would it be like a game that I typically just like pick up as a speed run. Like I'd see it and I'd be like, oh, I want to run that. I wouldn't do that. It's just because I've obviously been running it since it came out. And, that's why. Okay, well, go find out now, please. Obviously, these games aren't really very conventional for speedrunning. Um, I saw that on the Twitter post for the thing that the, there's only one comment and the one person said, hey, how do you, you speedrun until dawn? That is, that is, how is that possible? I mean, it is, but it depends if you've got the willpower to, you know, do it. And it's so, fun for people to watch the game too. What? Because when you speedrun it, you're still in seeing the entire story, and the skip that I do later on doesn't affect the story, so you still get to watch the entire the entire story. So, I think the, uh, if you like the game, the best part as well to kind of see the difference. Uh, world record right now is a 3:46 by held by you, and uh, last place on the leaderboard is about a 6:02. Yeah, I think that, that six hour run was made not that long ago, actually. Uh, about 11 months ago. Um, beyond that, you also have like yeah. a 415, and um, even with 415 to 346, that's a good maybe, what, uh, 40 minutes almost, or like 30 something minutes? About 30 minutes mm. of difference. A lot of people have actually run this game, um, surprisingly. Oh, so obviously, yes, as you see, she's in a bra and underwear, but uh, I forgot to mention that. Um, so yeah, if you, if you didn't pick the right choices, um, she'd still be wearing, she'd wear, I think she'd be wearing a t-shirt still, and maybe her jeans, and you'd have to try and get them off. And that takes time, so it's slow. So this speedrun isn't just about getting everyone killed, it's also about doing other things too. Yes, we should find out. Um, there is some things in this game that you would think you would have to do, but you don't. Um, so coming up here, um, you're going to find a secret like passage and there's going to be stuff inside of it. You have to open the passage, but you don't... Why is she standing still? That was weird. Um, you have to open the passage, but you don't actually have to go in it. You can just then leave. Oh, she keeps stopping. The, this, the PS5 version is really weird. I feel like you just stop moving a lot more. Like right, right there twice. There was nothing in my way, and she just stood still. And I couldn't move. What is that? Is it a button? Why would there be a button? That's a good question. Should I push it? That's what buttons were for, I guess. My, my favorite death is Emily's, not just because I hate her, by the way, but because it's just really funny and interesting to look at. I won't spoil how it happens. Also, a lot of people have played this game, but you may not know that you can get Emily killed where I'm going to get her killed. Um, it's, um, it's very unique and you may not know you can do it. So I'll, I'll obviously I'll point that out later on, but that's not till chapter eight. So still got a while left. But yeah, right there, you don't have to go in there and look in there. You can just uh, you can just leave. I do know the uh, the one that was mentioned. It won't be shooting him. I do know it's not that one. Yeah, we, we don't shoot her. That's why people think that you, you can't get her killed earlier, but you can. You can. I think I think I was the one that found Emily's early death. It hasn't changed at all from the route, right? There's no new routing for that. Well, 
No, no, no. The only thing that's changed since you asked me to run this was the skip. That's, that's it. All right, because I had that over. The little skip. Just keep your eyes peeled, okay? And he's very, very uh, gruesome and also very interesting, the way she dies. And that's why it's my favourite. Yeah, now, now we're going to meet the big bad psycho with his weird looking mask. Um, um, but if you've played this game, you'll know that obviously there's a lot of threats in this game, not just this guy. There's a lot of things that come after you. Um, I, feel like that, I feel like they maybe jam packed a bit too much into this game in terms of like what's going on, because uh, there is a lot going on in this game. Also, in the next doctor section, I'm, it's, he's going to ask me to pick who I prefer, um, like which character I like better than the other. And usually when I do this section, um, I pick which character I like the most, like actually pick which ones I like the most. Um, but I found out the other day that it's actually a bit faster to select that you dislike Matt the most. Um, I didn't know that. I don't know which order you have to select them in to dislike them at the most, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you some uh, pictures of people that... Um, so I'm actually going to pick who I like the most, because then you can see which character I prefer over the other. And you'll notice that it's mostly the guys. <laughs> but maybe you don't like them as much as you pretend to. Well, this is an exercise in honesty. Tell me which person I wonder if picking Jess would also give a, a shorter response for the least favorite. They could do. I, I have no idea. I just I got told by the previous order I could order that um, that it was faster to select uh, Matt as disliking him the most. But I just dislike him the most because I actually dislike the most. <laughs> I think it's the dialogue that plays out. The, what he says about them is, is what ends up making it faster. That's why I'd be curious about Jess, because obviously I think um, in terms of the characters, they try to have an equalization. So uh, Mike and Sam are meant to be the, like, you know, the primary main characters realistically, while Jess and Matt would be more of the characters who see less gameplay and less action as a whole. Who is it? So I'm wondering if Jess... Um, these the choices one. don't make... Hmm... These choices don't make any difference to the run. Um, you can pick whatever you want. It's just obviously some of them, some of the dialogue that he plays here is is a little bit faster than others. And apparently Matt's is the fastest. I just don't know the, the order to pick them to get that to happen, so. Yeah, that's the end of chapter three now i'm on chapter four uh, and a lot is going to go on in chapter four chapter four has a lot of stuff happening Hold on. so it's going to get really interesting but it's also one of the hard chapters to not fail because in this game if you mess up what you're doing it can cost you a lot of time obviously in a marathon but it's not too bad but obviously if you're going for a pb you can easily lose a run sister ask you who's sister josh it's it's Thankfully, my, my PB was really, really good. I only lost maybe a couple of seconds on that. Chapter... I think it was chapter six, I believe. Apart from that, it was really good. Oh, no, it was chapter seven. I, I kind of zoned out when I was doing the run. I forgot to select a choice. I wasn't paying attention, and it showed up for, like, three seconds. I didn't select it, so that cost me, like, three seconds. But apart from that, it was a really good run. Oh, here we go. Now we're going to go and try and attempt attempt to save Jess. We're not actually going to, though. We're going to do specific things to make sure she dies. Um, so in this part here, the faster you are to get to her, she will survive. So we're going to do some specific things to make sure we're not super fast. Um...
to right here, we're gonna fail this QTE. I'm gonna fall. It's also actually faster to mash this one, believe it or not. Any anyone you wanna fail, you wanna mash. I'm going to try my best to explain stuff, but I'm going to concentrate here to make sure I don't mess any of these up because there's a lot of QTEs happening. Of course. Um, so right now, essentially, uh, the general idea is casually, if you're doing this, um, this is the moment of time where you would either choose to save or kill Jess. And I think in order to do so, you are given three leeway options. So you're allowed to fail up to three times. Uh, failure can be described as failing a QTE or going down the wrong path, I think. Um, I don't remember entirely path-wise, but yeah. I think of the QTEs. Um, so what Matt Matt's going to be trying to do here is not only is he going to want to, um, you know, fail certain QTEs like the fall, but he does need to make sure he also, you know, succeeds in some of the faster ones. Because you do still want to go fast, but you want to make sure you fail just enough to where you're going to lead Jessica to die later. Yeah, so the main important choice is this one right here. We, we're going to choose to go left. Um, it's the slower path. So failing that first QT at the start and then going left here is enough to get her killed. I mean, that's the fastest way to make sure she dies. As well, while you failed the QT, you also took um, follow the path, which is the slower instead, I think, like running through the rocks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because like um, the two bridges have that. So that totals up to the three failures. And then once you're able to finally go see Jess, uh, she will be dead. Jess is weird because while killing her is going to remove a chapter later in the game, oh, they might remove a chapter later in the game. We still need to do something else for that. But we kind of mentioned earlier, Jess, I think you only play as twice in the whole game. So we do want to make sure we don't get the second play. Don't you? But oh, you yeah, get yeah. once in the beginning and then you get a once at the very end of the game. Yeah, and that, the, the part where you play as her at the start is literally a two second walk. Right. And then the rest is just QTs and the snowball fight. I was gonna actually say you don't play as her at all in the run, but then I remembered what you just said that you play as her just right at the start. It's, but it's so insignificant. You're actually right as well, because uh, technically even... with Jess in her section, if you um, if you save Matt, you actually play as Matt instead of Jess. So you'd only be playing as Jess if you, yeah. for some reason, didn't save Matt. Which yeah, I know she's dead. Yep, there it is, and her jaw is missing. Uh, cool thing about this game is. Um, Character also it shows you where you failed. So if you're wondering what happened, oh no! Wait a minute, I messed up all those QTEs. Oh no! Anyway, so we have to try and touch her to make sure she falls. Yeah, but even if she doesn't die, that happens regardless. It's just her mouth won't be missing, and she'll just be unconscious. But you'll think she's dead, right? But she's not actually dead. Really, just, I think any rule of any kind of horror media, unless you see a body or you see someone actually die, they're not dead. Yeah. Also, remember earlier when I said that we had to fail a QTE? That one's coming up. We're going to fail a QTE when we start to climb this uh, this scaff this uh, this mine shaft thing. Yeah. That will cause us to get a faster cutscene at start of chapter five. So I'm going to fail the first one. Because obviously, if you climb up more and then fall, it's going to lose you more time. So you want to fail this one here. And then we're gonna do it again. That probably barely falls. Yeah. So I'm not gonna mash these because I don't want to mess up my order. If I mash them, there's a good chance that I can mess this up really bad. But you don't have to mash these ones because it's not faster. So you can just wait for them to pop up. We can match this one. Uh, there we go. That part's kind of scary because if you get to the top right there and fall, you have to do it all over again. You lose a lot of time. Um, so there's one QT left here. Um, it's always triangle. So you just match triangle. But sometimes you don't even see it pop up. 
most of the time, even if you mash it slow. So I'm going to mash triangle here. The, the, the QTE is when you slide under the door. I guarantee you will not see it, but it is there. It just never, it, it never shows up for some reason. Yeah, I pressed it right there. It ne didn't show up now. You, you heard the little, t there's a little tiny beep when you press a QT, you can hear it very slightly. And it was there. I've never done that part. That's the hardest part of chapter four. Um, there's not really much that's hard now until maybe the skip in chapter seven and then the end of the game. Um, the only real difficult sections in the run are the sections where you have to do a lot of QTEs back to back, and if you mess them up, it's bad. That's one of them. Um, there's also one in chapter... There's, there is one in chapter seven, but it's pretty easy. Um, but then there's ones in chapter eight and nine, or maybe I think it's chapter nine and ten with Sam that can kill a run. Like when I was trying to get a PB the other week before I got my wood record I have now, I literally lost a run in chapter nine because I fell off the wall. It's 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 pretty bad. Um so yeah. Apart from that, there's not really much that's that's gonna give me trouble now, maybe till chapter seven with the skip. But that should be pretty easy to do as long as I don't fall and get stuck, which can happen. Ash. Ash. Yeah, obviously I actually got captured. Now we're going to go and try and uh, save her, I guess, or something. Everybody's got to walk to the little shed um, where Ashley. something is going to be waiting for us. Anyone out there, Ashley? So we're going to do something pretty interesting here. Also, if you didn't know, I mean, it's very minor that you probably wouldn't know anyway. But when you go into this building, um, there is a, I think it's like a bird cage or something that falls down. And he like goes, whoa, and gets stunned by it. But if you just walk more to the right, it doesn't trigger and you can just walk past it. So when you go in here, if you just stick to the right here, it won't actually fall. So there's a little bit of time. Yeah, they, they never run in this game. They literally just walk everywhere. Even when there's, you know, like that, his friend's been captured, and yeah, he's just walking to try and find her. So right here, um, no matter what you do in this section, it will always kill Josh. But... Um, I'm going to select the, the you, you get two things to do here. You get a dialogue option and then you get the actual choice. So I'm going to select to save Josh or I'm going to say that I'm going to save Josh, but then I'm actually going to save Ashley. That plays, that makes it play out a certain dialogue where he's like, oh no, I didn't mean to do that and it's a little bit faster. And then we pick the save Ashley. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. Why would you do this? Oh my God, why did I do? Ah! 
Uh, also, fun fact, this scene on the Japanese version just gets put into a black screen. So you can hear all the screaming in the background, but you're just looking at a black screen. They didn't even, like, cut the scene out. They just censored it by, like, making it a black screen. I wonder what that is like a uh, an uncensored uh, Japanese version of the game. I know Resident Evil 7 has a similar thing where uh, there's actually a lot of time saved because they had to edit out the ultra violent parts. Yeah, I, I remember looking into it, and uh, the only difference is that, other than like dialogue, it's that. Um, I do, I do, um, I have acquired the Japanese version of the game, and I am going to test it soon. Um, to see if it could be faster in terms of just dialogue and, and general playing. But I do know that that wouldn't be faster. It still plays the same scene, just makes it black screen. There might be other little details that maybe some, like, YouTubers or stuff don't notice. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know yet. I'll have to find out. But, you know, the whole charm of this game, you know, is, is the dialogue. He's being able to understand what they're saying. You know, if you play it in Japanese version, you... It, that kind of just goes away, though. No, no, this is insane. We need to go get some help. We're gonna figure this out. Matt, we need to go get help now. And we should look for the others. Mike and Jess are off 69ing each other, and who knows where Sam is? I think she's in the lodge. Yeah, this is the first time we see Matt and Emily since chapter two. And then we don't get the players them until the end of chapter five anyway, for the first time. Since the start. I don't think he's too happy. Yeah, so as you can see, there was like a zombie mannequin kind of thing just like sitting on that chair. Because again, you selected that you were uh, scared of zombies. I believe that, that Dr. Hill starts getting the cuts and starts turning into the zombie. I believe it's at the end of chapter six. Um... Or, yeah, I believe it's chap the end of chapter six or the end of chapter seven. Do you intend to continue with this elaborate self indulgence? Do you even believe that I am real? Ah. Okay, so that's chapter four done. All the choices done. Now we get to see the previous John section again. Now chapter five um, is, 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 is a long chapter, but there's not really much going on in terms of choices and QTEs. It's mostly movement. Chapter five, there's a lot, a lot of movement. So we do more gaming in chapter five. Instead of watching cutscenes. Also, I am sorry before someone asks the question because I know they will. Yes, I'm going to kick the wolf. I don't want to, but it's faster. You have to do it because it allows us to skip the last sanatorium section in Chapter 9. Um, if you don't kick the wolf, the wolf will save you. And that's slow because then you have to then play through it. So you have to kick the wolf. individual we're considering as a person of interest, but his whereabouts are currently unknown. You know, there is still the old sanatorium on the mountain. Could he be hiding there? 
but yes, right here. This cutscene here that plays is now about 20 seconds faster than the one that would normally play if you didn't mess up climbing the uh, mine shaft thing. That's not good. That's really not good. Damn it. Um, so it saves about 20 seconds, but we lose about five seconds from falling off the mine shaft. So it saves about 15 seconds. Um, which in this game is actually a lot of time so and um, also yeah uh, playing this game on 50 f uh, 50 fps playing this game on ps5 at 60 fps makes this lamp do some weird groovy things so you're gonna see this lamp doing some weird groovy things right now um i believe after we kick the wall the lamp will start um flying and flinging everywhere you can see it like vibrating already but it doesn't do like super weird stuff yet anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, so this, this level's mostly just movement. Um, we need to get a pass, like a, a key card pass thing to get through this door. And that's basically what this, this chapter entails, getting that, and then getting back. No, you don't touch the finger machine. You don't get your fingers chopped off or whatever. You just ignore it completely. You're just doing a bunch of movement here. Trying to make sure not to get stuck or slow down. Like, you can slow down this game just by getting close to something. You don't even have to touch it and it'll just stop moving. Also, the movement in this game is weird that when you try to move, sometimes he'll, like, try and turn a different way while you're walking in one direction, and then you can't, like, turn back a different way. It's very annoying. You can ignore the thing you trapped down to and look at it. Just walk past it. There's a lot of stuff in this game that you'd think you'd have to do, but you actually don't. Um, if you know, like, ways around it, like certain stuff that you could think that you couldn't skip, but you actually can just by doing certain things. Yeah, like the, the finger machine's here, but we can just walk right past it. Don't even have to look at it. get this to unlock the doors which allows us to get back into that room previously that we tried to get into but couldn't because the door was locked now we just got to go back
I, I find it kind of weird that this part doesn't have any QTEs or anything. Also, fun fact, this specific song that's playing um, in the background is also in Dead Space 3. Huh. Yeah, this game stole it from Dead Space 3. <laughs> it's probably just, you know, general sound effects that you can get that they license, probably. Yeah, so we're gonna kick the wolf now. I'm very sorry, but it has to be done for the sake of the speed. Back in here. Yeah, and then this is where the lamp starts spazzing out. It's having a it's having a groovy old time, just flinging around everywhere. <laughs> And it's gonna fling around here as well, a little bit. Lamp's just having fun. Oh, it didn't actually do it. I thought it would do it more than that. It's surprising. So, what have we here? Come on, come on. We're coming up to the end of the mic section here, and then we're going to get to play as uh, Matt and Emily. Well, I say Matt and Emily, just Matt, but Emily will also be there. Sadly. The intelligent Emily, apparently. Of course. I never even noticed that until I was streaming the game the other day and someone pointed it out in my chat and I was like, wait, it really says that? And I had to like double check to see and I was like, hang on, it really says she's intelligent, that can't be wrong. Well, I mean, in fairness to like, you know, despite anyone disliking her, given what happens in the mid game to her, I, I think it's pretty accurate. <laughs> Yeah, she, 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 she's a good survivor, she can put yeah. that to herself, I like, guess. Of all, of, the, uh, of all the characters, I think the only person who's maybe, I don't know, more of a survivor might be Mike. He's also supposed to be like the Nathan Drake type. Yeah, Mike Drake goes type. through a lot. Right, but he's also in, like the Nathan Drake type. Game. Emily's, you know, Emily. It's cooler yeah. that she does it. I mean, Mike does survive till the end of the game, though, but... I mean, it doesn't sound. You can make lost. her. <laughs> That's time. Okay, true. I mean, you can make all of them survive. <laughs> true. I mean, like, Emily will actually hit the end of the game, unlike uh, Matt or Jess, who gets saved Josh earlier. No, I mean, what if they were wrong? What? Maybe we should have checked the shed to see if it was really Speaking true. Speaking of which, I believe you said it's around an Emily chapter we see the new skip that you're talking about. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I'm assuming it's probably the next one. Uh, no, it is in chapter seven. When we're in the uh, the mine. Yeah, that's chapter seven. All right. It's gonna be pretty cool. No, me, I'll probably well, fail it a lot. If we start smashing shit down, he's gonna hear us. Well, you got any better suggestions? But it does look kind of cool. How about? Look. What? The window. That's great, Matt. I can just about fit my lip balm through that little slot. Oh, come on. You will never fit through there, big guy. Okay, fine. Here it goes. I'm gonna huff, and I'm gonna... Shh, just do it! So we're gonna break down this door with that, with that big axe. Oh, 
Also, it's funny right here that Emily's actually inside the door. You just don't, can't really see very well because Matt's in the way, but she's literally standing inside the door. What the fuck is going on? It's got to be the guy, the, the one who, who got to Chris and Ash and Josh. He's got to know this is the only way back. Don't say that. Look, the cable car's all the way out there. Well, that's, I, I mean, that's not far, right? You, you can jump it? <laughs> I'm good, Em. But not that good. Flattered, though. Well, Matt, if you can't jump that, what are we gonna do? I, I don't know. God, everything is, like, so busted up. Um, so you can either go to that poster on the wall there and then, or the map, sorry, and pick that first or go to this control panel first. I believe it's a little bit faster to go to the control panel first. Depending which way around you do it, you get different dialogue. I believe it's faster to do it this way. Matt, we need another plan. We can't just sit around and do nothing. Because I think the dialogue that plays when you pick up the this first is a little bit slower. Hey, look. Fire tower. Might. Well, it's not like we have any other options. Probably, yeah. Matt, we gotta get to that radio! We can use the radio to call for help. Somebody's gotta pick up the signal. Oh, well, someone's learned Ooh, to man. the rules. What? What rules? Rule um, one, in a sec, Emily we're gonna do the only right. QT in this Rule chapter. Two, nothing else matters because um, Emily is always right. We're gonna, we're gonna have to save Emily. Uh -huh. Sadly, even if you don't do it, she won't die. So. She's a survivor. <laughs> I wish she wasn't. It saves so much time. It would. I wish you could kill a lot of the characters faster, actually. That's an actual, like, thing. Because, like, in this part, like, I think there's oh. QTs that let you, if you fail them, like, cooking, you think you would fall off the here, the tower or right? something. Cause, like, you're pretty high up when you see this part. Yeah. But I don't think you can actually die right here. I think you have to, like, um, wait at least until a little bit longer. Yeah, it's like, even in, like, um, like, Man and Madan, um, like, you can get Conrad killed pretty early on in the game, and that skips his entire sections on the boat. That saves a lot of time. It's a shame there's nothing like this really in this game that you can do. Um, like, it just doesn't... You just can't kill any characters really early on. Especially main ones, like... Like, for example, Mike and uh, Sam, they literally cannot die until the end of the game. Which, it's like, okay, they make this game where you have to make, you know, certain characters survive and stuff like that, and you play out the story, but it doesn't really feel like it when it's literally impossible to get them killed until the final literal scene of the game. So... You know, it's not really the case of, you know, you trying to get everyone to survive because it's pretty easy to get those two to survive. In all fairness, they did give uh, Hayden uh, top billing, and I don't think they're going to let you kill her off in the very beginning if she either, like, yeah, hey, we have, uh, you know, we have saved the cheerleader. Oh, wait, you killed her immediately? Oh. Oh. True. So right here, we can get ahead of Emily, um, which saves a couple of seconds because she's slow. But it's kind of hard to do. You need really precise movement to get ahead of them. On this turn right here, if I can get it. Maybe. No, I'm like too far away. We need. She needs. She, if we're too close enough to her, she'll stop moving here. And we can get ahead of her. Yeah, there we go. Grooving. It's very hard to do that. Is because you need really precise movement to do that. We should find a safe spot. And it saves a bit of time because she is quite slow here and you can get stuck on her and stuff. As long as we don't hide in the lodge, that's where he expects us to go. And all you need to do here is um, walk to this ledge to trigger this, uh, the camera change and then just turn around and walk back. Right there, and then we just turn around and walk back. Don't actually have to look over the cliff. Yeah, 
has a lot of deer. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, that was that was an awful pun, but I appreciate that one. It's fun. Thank you. Also, now we get to see the world's uh, most resilient towel. Oh yeah. There is also another fun fact too. Um, in the um, PS3 unreleased version, which had the same story, they just had different actors for the, the characters. Um, in this scene, it actually has nudity. Um, but obviously, I'm assuming because you know, famous actress or that, they they got rid of it for this part. What are you doing um, out there? Which I find quite amusing that that that's the case. Um, but there is some 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 gameplay that you can watch here for like a, I think maybe it was a trailer or something like that or a pre-release build of the game because you can actually acquire builds of the previous game um, if you want to play it on PS3 and look at it. But yeah, the, this part had some nudity if, for some reason and they got rid of it. There's a lot of little tiny details Josh. and stuff in this game. Now I've literally just gave you guys the idea of literally going to look this up on YouTube just to see boobs. <laughs> that wasn't my intention. Well, that's how it goes. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to be informational. Also, time for one of in this, my favorite. In this um, very boring time. One of my favorite fail QTEs. Yeah, we literally just stand there and do nothing. It's great. It's a great strat. It is. where that camera was that was filming that. Apparently. What did you do? I'm going to give you ten seconds. Nine. No, 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 no. Seven. Please, no. Sam. Sam. And then we just wait and let this fire doesn't select nothing. I like to believe that the uh, the killer there is just confused. Like he's not gonna not gonna do yeah. anything here. But that also again saves a lot of time. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of time, but it does save a bit of time. It's getting captured no, straight away. That was exciting, wasn't it? Well done. The game seems to be going very well. Yes. Oh, the good work. We did exploring the source of your fear. And you've just gone and used it for ill. Mm -hmm. Your overwhelming fear of failure. You turned it against these people who use it desperately to torment. 
Has it been worth it? I mean, he did, yeah, he counted from 10 to 7 and then came in the room. So he, he just waited the extra 7 seconds, to be fair. Also, another fun fact, there's not a single QT we have to do in Chapter 6. Perfect. Well, there is, but we fail them all, so we don't actually do any. We just fail them. Really, this game is about falling upwards when you think about it. Why are we still talking about this? Let's go! Also, I do have to hit the deer here. I'm sorry, again. I have to hit the animal, but it's faster to do it, so... They're very important. I know that we'll be hitting our next uh, character death as well. Yeah, say goodbye to Matt. He's gonna die in a sec. <laughs> so I think this is what I was talking about earlier, where if you mess with some of the animals, it's like, oh, nature um, isn't kind to you because you disturbed, I don't know, something on the mountain. But I could be wrong. I just know here that if you if you if you don't hit the deer, then you can just go. But if you do hit it, then they'll back you up but to the edge and then obviously if you if you do the QTEs you'll be fine but if you don't you're dead so So I'm just gonna fail this QT here and Matt's gonna die. Again, mashing because it's faster on this one. I like to believe it's because the deer heard your pun. Yeah. Now he's dead. Also the So basically now the two characters that have died are the ones that would be in the mine at the end of the game, so that's it's hard to skip now. The deal with deer as well is that deer are incredibly territorial. Uh, deer aren't like, I don't know why movies always portray them as like soft creatures. Deer will mess you up. Be careful around deer. Like deer hitting cars, like they'll total a car. Uh, they will attack. Deer are violent. What do I do now? At least in territorial senses. So you don't mess with them and you're probably fine, but yeah. No. But now we've got to do some boring stuff with Emily. And I believe this is the first time you do play as Emily as well. Um, fun fact though, the clipping, the stair clipping that we are going to do for the glitch and the skip later on is actually easier to do with the girl characters. So I guess there is a bonus to uh, playing as her. And also the skip is with her, so I can't hate her too much. Now we've just got to climb this uh, this uh, tower to try and get through a radio to call for help. Which isn't going to go very well. Which is like most things in this game.
Yeah, we have to turn the power on so we can actually use the radio. So a few people have asked as well about uh, Emily. Uh, Emily's whole yeah. issue is with Matt, uh, he's surprisingly, um, you can kill him pretty quickly. But with Emily, uh, her best trait is that she is a survivor. So kind of a lot of what you're going to put her through, she doesn't actually die. Her character will constantly find ways to kind of survive that. Um, there will be an early way to kill her, however, um, she'll, there'll be certain things that she'll go up to that's going to be like, hey, uh, I'm not actually dead. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point actually can i wonder if because i'm not actually i'm not actually sure but can all the characters no no they can't i was going to say can all the characters die in the final scene if you mess up but no um cause i think they leave one by one depending on how long you take to do it so because uh, it actually would always get out regardless so no that won't happen i think it does depend on who you end up saving. I think Ashley is only the one who survives is because anyone who would go before Ashley in the order actually ends up dying ahead of Ashley. Because I think yeah. the order might actually be who's, I don't think Ashley's first because there's a few people in the ending. It might be, um, who's, I think Chris is the last, I think it's Emily, Ashley, Chris for the order. But I could be wrong. I don't, even, I don't even remember the last time I played this game normally to the point where people were alive at the end. I think I've done, I think I did one all survive speed on a long time ago when I don't have a video for it anymore, I believe, so. I did all survivors, but I also, got bullied into saving the dog, so I lost time. Oh no. That's what happens. Yeah, you need, you, you, you can skip the entire yeah. Uh, yeah, you live anyway. final, uh, yeah. So it's faster to put foul that QT there because it instantly skips to the next scene. Oh, did you submit a run to the door? I don't remember you submitting Yeah, I have one on all, uh, all survive. I did oh. 90%, but I don't think I liked my timers. I don't remember why I never submitted 90%, but I did all survive as the main Well, think about it now. You just need to get a PS5. Exactly. I just need to buy a PS5. Place. Easy two what, minutes drop a thousand dollars to save two minutes in Until Dawn because I don't have any other reason to buy a PS5. <laughs> I would only be buying it to play Until Dawn. I mean, it seems like a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. I don't know. I didn't see her. Perfect. She must have come down here. I haven't seen her either. I mean, I'm just gonna point this out. Uh, PS5 is totally not worth it at the moment. I I bought it to play Uncharted to do speed runs um and it didn't make a difference um chris, so chris, I just want to say, it's it's literally not said. worth it like if, if you're hesitant to buy a ps5 where well, you want one don't get one yet because there's just nothing on it there's barely any games so it's not really a big deal that people can't get them to be honest sure ash sure
Out of all the characters as well, I think, at least in my opinion, Ashley has the best Did movement. Her movement's uh, the easiest and the, the smoothest to control. What that was that? It was like, it was like a see-through shape, like a ghost. Oh boy. I'm serious. Uh, the loading times aren't really faster. Um, it's pretty much the same as PS4 Pro, even with an SSD. Um, so uh, the, 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 the PS5 mostly saves time due to um, the game just not lagging because um, the PS4 version runs most of the time at like 25 FPS and sometimes it drops to lo as low as like 15, especially in Chapter 3. And that's why the PS5 version saves so much time, just because it's not as laggy. What if Sam needs us? What if she's in trouble? Oh, God. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so when I mentioned about those things not working when you turn them, another one's coming up here in a second. Also, I'm going to do a glitch, but it's not useful. It's just, it just can't happen. And it looks funny. Um, so right here, if you walk up to this pillar as you get stunned by the, by the noise, um, she kind of just walks into the pillar. Oh, there she is. She's hiding inside the pillar. It's fine. Don't worry about it. See what? It's tiny furniture? No! It's a whole scene with dolls and everything! Yeah? It's right here. This one's sometimes one of you tiny. Okay, that was good. Oh, I, I guess you need it's to very weird. You have to, like, be really precise with it to get it to, uh, to turn. She was a ghost all along. Ghosts yeah. don't exist, okay? Oh, okay, who was talking to us at the seance, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> what did that? How does a picture just jump off the wall like that? To go grab this key to unlock that uh that little dollhouse. someone who was there or someone or something that was watching us maybe it's a warning i think someone i think someone put this here to mess with us no it has to be the ghost is trying to tell us the maniac killed hannah and Bat. i think it's this bastard that he's he's here trying to fuck with our heads why would he set this all up chris he's trying to tell us that he's going to come after us all too <laughs> so in this in this uh, little diary here you can go left on the pages, but it's faster just to go right. Because if you go left, you're going to end up um, triggering some dialogue you don't want, and then you have to listen to it. Everyone being and it's, it's optional, so you have to listen to this page. Cozy fires and hot tubs and OMG, Mike, I am so psyched to spend some time with him. I can't read this. It's so sad, Chris. Oh, 
Oh, scary. That's so loud. That that jump scare is so loud. If you don't know it's coming, it's pretty bad. But you did see it, Chris, for real. I saw something. But where'd it go? We have to kind of wait here for Chris to uh, Wait, there's move. Another room through here. Cause you can't get past him. Batman. Chris, I don't know if I want to keep going. Where in the world are we now? Are you kidding me? Did you know this was here? This, this is like a whole other hotel. I had no idea this was here. So just gonna casually walk past him. Don't want to talk to him. Is that slow? You know what? No. Ash. No, I've had enough. I'm not going down any further into this nightmare, Chris. Ashley, I understand, okay? I'm really freaked out too, but if Sam's down there all alone with a maniac and we leave, we're basically killing her ourselves. Ashley, come on. Why are you always right? I'm not always right. Well, when you're right, you're right. I don't want to be. I want to leave. No. We've got to find Sam. Let's go. It's right here. You can't move straight away for some reason. You have to wait. It's like you're locked in place. And again, right here, you're gonna have the option to uh, either investigate the noise or the, no, sorry, investigate the person you see, or go to the door of Chris. Um, it's a lot slower to, to go and investigate, obviously. So you want to go through the door. This is what I was talking about at the start of the game. Since you pick zombies, Sam's clothes are inside this like zombie dummy. Um, but if you pick something else like clowns or something like that or scarecrows, it will be it will be different. She's just sleeping. Chris, is she dead? Please, she don't leave. She's not. She's not. She's dead. How do you know? She's still breathing. What the hell is wrong? She's been knocked out. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. This is bad. This is bad. We've got to get her out of here. Oh, oh shit. Ah! Ah! No. You... Ah! Now they've been captured. Now we're gonna play a little game. 
Oh, he's gonna play a little game with us. It doesn't even look like they're actually tied down to those chairs. And I like how Chris is still able to pick up the gun and use his other hand. We're always talking around it. And now, I mean, we've wasted everything. Ashley, none of it was wasted. What do you mean? Every second that I spent with you was the only thing I ever wanted to do with my time. <laughs> what are you saying, Chris? I'm sorry. I, I should have told you how I felt. God, Chris. Ashley, I swear when we get out of this... Oh, God! Ashley, I'll get you out of this! I won't let you die! A little bit of my special little subjects. Shit. Don't be scared. Oh, you should be, Ash. Because here's the twist. Chris has made one fatal choice already today. And now, he must make another. Chris... You can take that gun in front of you and shoot Ashley, or you can shoot yourself. Whoever is left can live. The choice is yours. <laughs> Don't be so silly, Chris. Um, so we want to shoot Ashley um, because it plays out a different scene. Um, in chapter 8, which saves a little bit of time. Um, and you'll see why later on when we get there. You have gone and that's the end of chapter 6. Don't you see? Huh? Don't you see that this torture porn has gone too far? Huh? Now what gives you the right to play God in these people's lives? What makes you so special then? Huh? Also, yeah, as you can see now, Dr. Hill's face, his head is all cut up and he's bleeding. Um, this happens when you select zombie as your fear at the start of the game. Um, I believe it's the only thing that you can select that will actually affect what happens to him. Um, I don't think there's anything else that changes it, I believe. And now, we've got the most interesting chapter. Because this is the chapter that has the skip in it. But it's not for a little bit yet. Got some stuff to do first. Exactly, this entire game is a break. Exactly. It's <laughs> the time you're just sitting here anyway. Like, that's why this game has a lot of downtime, because it pretty much is just cutscenes and 
The only times where you really have to pay attention is when you have to select a choice or do QTs or move. I'm so glad you found me. It's okay. Okay, you're okay? I, I don't understand. How did you get here? How'd you find me? Just a fucking maniac up here on the mountain. Yeah, I noticed. He lives in this, like, web of tunnels. I was down there trying to get out, and then I found this grate, and I saw you. Listen, this guy who you're talking about, he attacked me. He showed me these videos, too. And one of them showed Josh being killed, just ripped apart by this huge fucking saw blade. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is going on around here? There's a door here. It won't open. Can you unlock it from your side? So we're going to find out some uh, some very important information in a minute, which obviously, if you've played this game, you'll know what that is. But if you haven't, it's going to be a pretty good surprise. Um, surprise, which was actually spoiled for me during my casual playthrough, because I saw a thumbnail of someone's video and it spoiled it for me. I didn't actually get to get the full effect of it. I like how she talks about fighting off killer man maniacs. She didn't fight off anything, she just stood there and get, got captured. Right. My bad. Dun, dun, dun. It's Josh. I can't believe it's Oscar award winning actor Rainy Malik. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, Alright, now we can check out that new skin. Now we're in the mines. Yeah, it's not for love, but we still got to um, play through a bit of the mines first before we can do it. So we've got about a couple minutes still. I will point out the skip when it's uh, when it's coming up. But we have to. Um, one thing you have to do to progress the game is to turn on the power. So we need to do that first. If we don't do that, um, we can't actually uh, progress. Although the skip does lead to some pretty interesting side effects that happens not long after it. But we'll we'll see that when we come to it. We still got to play for quite a bit before we get there. Yeah, so maybe I could explain some stuff. So in this game, 
um, you can actually use stairs to clip through walls. Um, because the animation of being on the stairs is like a set animation. But if you manage to get on the stairs and trigger the animation while you're facing a wall, it's really hard to do, but if you manage to pull it off, um, you can actually then make make the stair animation happen through, to make you go through the wall. Um, but um, specifically with Emily in this chapter, I think it makes it easier because she's limping, but you can actually do a setup to get to edge as close to the stairs as you can get without getting on them. Um, so that's what makes the skip pretty easy. Um, doing the skip here, um, basically is the easiest spot in the entire game to use the stair clipping. Everywhere else it's extremely hard and random to do. So it's just convenient that right here is the easiest one to do it on. And it's also the one that leads to a skip, so pretty convenient. But like I said, first we have to actually turn on the power um, to, to, to activate the elevator. If we don't, we won't be able to progress. So we have to do that first. Um, like I said, the skip isn't a big one. It doesn't skip any major things. It skips um, a cutscene and some walking. But for this game, a skip that saves a minute is a lot of time. So. Yeah, the stair clipping glitch has been known for years. Um, and there has been skips that have been tested, but just don't work because you can't progress. Um, but this is the first skip that's been found that actually works. And the only reason I found it is just because of the fact that uh, Ekdice has asked me to do this run. If he didn't, I wouldn't have played the game again. So it's, if you want to thank someone for finding the skip, Tim, <laughs> I wouldn't have found it if he didn't ask me to play the game. So, you know, these things work out quite well from my, uh, my understanding of setting up the GDQ shows. Uh, there's been a few new world records made, uh, PBs, because people get back into running a game that they might not normally want to do. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have probably touched this again for a long time. Like, until now, I haven't properly run this game for a PB in, like, four years. So if it wasn't for him asking me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. So... And then it gave me the idea to try the skip, and it actually worked. I, I wasn't, su I was surprised. I just wanted to try it to see if it would work, and it actually did. So I didn't think it would. Usually they don't in this game, but it did. So. Again, this is one of the sections where you obviously you're climbing. Um, this one is the easiest out of them all. Um, it's only got four QTEs in it, so it's the easiest one to do. Um, but the ones later on with, with Sam in chapter nine and 10 are pretty... Well, chapter nine mainly is the hardest. Chapter 10 is not too bad. Um, but like I said, if you fail and fall, you lose a lot of time then you have to climb back up again and it just baffles me that climbing to the top and falling off doesn't kill you i wish it did that would be useful but it doesn't so i do feel like a lot of the, the 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 stuff in this game doesn't really make that much of an impact on stuff especially failing certain qts doesn't really affect what happens in the game which is a shame Yeah, like I said, when I do the skip, um, I can actually get stuck um, if I mess it up and I'll have to restart the game. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it might. That's the only thing that could really go wrong with it is if I fall back down to the floor out of bounds, then I'm kind of screwed. But yeah, it's coming up in a second. I just need to turn on the power and then we're going to do the skip. Who's excited? Whoa. Yeah. Finally getting to some good stuff. <laughs> Not just moving around and watching cutscenes. We're gonna do some skips. We'll skip. Right, here we go. So I had to turn on that power first, and now we can uh, now we can do it. So we're gonna come down here. I 
I'm going to come down these stairs. And then when I get to the bottom of these stairs, I'm going to face the wall to the left. And I'm going to wiggle myself to try and get myself as close to the stairs as I can. If she will move. She's not being nice to me for some reason. She's moving the opposite way, I don't know why. This can be really finicky sometimes. Thankfully, it went really, pretty, really well in my PB. There we go. No, no, she's moving to backwards again for some reason. I don't know why. Why do this again? This ain't saving any time anymore, probably. And it's still fun to see. Also, I like the idea of the window yeah. watching Emily, just kind of wondering why she's just rubbing up against the wall. pretty finicky to, to you just got to keep doing this until you can get as close as you can and then try and wiggle your way through the wall but for so i don't know why she keeps going backwards i'm getting close and she's like rotating back she shouldn't be doing that like this is definitely not saving time anymore but it's still cool to show off she keeps going backwards i don't know why oh there we go now we're just going to try and wiggle our way through the wall and of course she goes back up the stairs. Cool. I'm really glad this went really well in my PB because... Oh, there we go. Now we clip through the wall. Oh. And we're going to walk over here, go through this wall, and we're going to hug the wall so we can drop down to the floor. And then we're going to trigger the elevator from out of bounds. But we can't actually use it yet. The elevator isn't active. Um, there is a specific trigger that we need to hit. So we need to go back over here and open this door. Thankfully, the trigger for this door or the prompt for this door is actually accessible from this side. And we can open it from this side, even though you only meant to open it from the other side. So we just came from there. We just came from this way, open that door from the opposite side. But that door is the trigger that allows this elevator to be activated. So we have to open it. And now we can... Uh, Leave. Um, one side effect of that is now the next area isn't going to load. Um, so we're going to be chasing, no. running away from the, the flamethrower dude in the open void. No. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, so yeah, that skip would only save about a minute. And that, that entails... That means I need to get it like really fast, the clip itself. I can't. It took me a long time to get it, so it didn't save any time, but I still got to show it off, so it's fine. It's more hilarious than the don't move prompt because no. Emily's just standing out wide in the open. It's like, hey, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good because you do these QTEs while just running <laughs> in the open. You can see them just pop up. Oh, God. She is just going and then... to. Oh. <laughs> I think Emily might be lost. God, I, I'm just loving this whole scene. She, she's finding a door. Yeah. The idea of running to the void great. is great. I'm glad this is an actual cutscene and not a part where you'd have to walk or this probably this skip probably wouldn't work. Oh yeah. Because I'd probably fall, or it just wouldn't play out properly. I know it wouldn't fall, but it just wouldn't play out properly. Only is such a girl no, boss can that. move the environment. Josh. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> it's just a shame that it took me a while to get the skip, but that's fine. I, I, it was worth it, I'd say. I'd say it's absolutely worth saying that. Yeah. I mean, it would have been fine, but for some reason, she just kept going backwards to the right, even though she shouldn't have been. It's, it was very strange. Yeah, so basically, Josh isn't very happy about them bullying his sisters last year and getting them killed, so he tried to play a big prank on them. But he's not the bad, main bad guy of, uh, of the game, as you probably can tell. My little phantasmagorical spectacle. <laughs> no detail too small. No happened? opportunity missed. It was such a delight to play the puppet master. 
to, to all of your Pavlovian panic. <laughs> That shit was expensive. And no retakes. Nope, nope, nope. Only double takes. Oh, you should have seen your faces. Hook, line, and sinker for every little stinker. Josh, why are you doing this? Yeah, don't even ask this squirrely little runt. He's got no clue. He's out of his fucking tree. Well, he's definitely off his meds. Oh, come on, you guys. Revenge is the best medicine. You're done. Mike, he's sick. What? Come on, you guys are all gonna thank me when you guys become internet sensations. Wait, what? What? Oh, you better believe this little puppy's going viral, ladies and germs. I mean, we got the unrequited love. We got, we got blood. I don't think there's enough hard drives in China to, to count all the views we're gonna get, you guys. What are you talking about, you asshat? Jessica's fucking dead. What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. You are gonna fucking pay, bitch! Also, now we get this really long scene where we're just gonna carry Josh to try and tie him up and stuff. Guys! Guys, come on. Seriously, this is crazy, you know? Shut up. Chris! And it's gonna take bro, a while to do bro. that. Where are we going? Where are you guys taking me? Locking you up, bro. What? You can't do anything stupid before we call the police in the morning. Come on. I didn't do anything. Are, are you serious, bro? Goddamn murderer is what you are. Uh, I didn't do it. Michael, please, just listen to me, man. I did not hurt Jessica. You know what, man? You need to shut up. Chris. Man, Although the next chapter on, is the best chapter, because we get to kill Emily. Listen, stop. Don't say that. Oh, fine. She's very good. Yeah. Jack. I like how she does a skip and then we kill her. <laughs> well, she did uh, warp reality. That's true. You only see what you want to see. You're Stop talking! You are. Ah, dude. Ah, it's not my fault. You suckers can't take a joke. Ugh. Oh, oh, wait. Did it hurt you? Did you just. You feel a little. A little bit of pain? Mm. Right now, I am so, so sorry! Ah, stop it! Jesus, dude. Stop! Michael, I'm sorry, man. I can't tell you how sorry I am that something happened to Jessica, but I swear, I swear to you, I have no idea what happened to her. Josh, be, be honest with me. Do you, do you really expect us to trust you for a single goddamn second after all the shit you put us through? <laughs> okay, and we all just get along. <laughs> ah! Damn it! <laughs> Not dicking around. Alright. <laughs> Try like this, guys. Huh? Not like, not like you got the guts to really do anything about it, anyways. Ah! Ah! Please. Really, really, really need to shut up, man. Oh. oh. I love Josh's dialogue here. It's really funny. That's That's why he won the Oscar. Oh my god. Okay, time me That's very true. Right, right. This entire scene was the whole reason he got okay. cast as uh, Freddie Mercury and, and it was in James Bond. <laughs> Just because of it. <laughs> Mike, you know what happened? No, no, I, 
I don't. I got a problem, Mike. I don't remember killing Jess. Jesus Christ. I mean, like, I feel like I, I would remember killing her, you know? She's soft. And she's probably got, like, a really tight bod. Shut your fucking mouth! Seriously? What, what? Did you think I was gonna shoot him? I, I don't know. Come on, Chris, you know me better than that. Yeah. Well, that's you virtually the end of chapter that. seven. Uh, now we're on to chapter eight, well, which starts off very good. Where we get to kill Emily in 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 a way that you probably didn't even know was possible. It's very interesting and it looks pretty gruesome. Why don't you go back to the lodge? Make sure everything's all right. I'll stay here with this lunatic until the morning. Oh, sleep over. <laughs> Can we order pizza? <laughs> you sure you're okay? Yeah. The one I know everything's fine back there. Yeah, you're right. See you in the morning. Josh. <laughs> Josh! How does it feel? Do you enjoy all those emotions that my sisters got to feel once one year ago? Only, only guess what? They didn't get to laugh it off. No! No, 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 no! They're gone! Jessica's fucking dead! What? Did you hear me? Jessica is dead. Can we order pizza? Dick! What happened with Jess, Mike? I don't Josh remember is fun. killing Jess. Christ. Oh, God. Oh, my God, Matt! So just gonna do a little bit of movement and then um we're gonna get chased by some wendigos which yes those are in this game you haven't realized by now um, i think this is the first actual like proper chase sequence with them isn't it that you do in the game um yeah we're, we're gonna get her killed um because if you didn't know you actually kind of get emily killed here right we're gonna really be um, um hitting the point of ramping up Really, all the deaths for a run where you're trying to kill everyone. There's been a lot of not dying. Yeah, that's just because you can't get them killed up until like a certain point, which is annoying. This is gonna be the way. So, we're gonna do all these QTs. We're not gonna fail them. And then we're gonna go left here. And then, if you didn't know. There's going to be an elevator. Um, and if you literally just uh, come to the elevator and just uh, stand in it and don't go up, after about two seconds, you'll die. So just stand there. That's yep. gruesome too, by the way. So that's it right there. It's uh... I, I love that type of uh, a death in horror media, but it's always wild to see someone's eyes just pop. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I know she's dead. And that's the earliest you can get her killed. Crap is right there. Now. Josh, 
Jess? It's not Jess. Sorry, man, but who is it? I don't know. We should check it out. I got your back. Good. So right here, it's actually faster to take the gun off Mike. Um, and open the door ourselves with the gun. I don't know what you're in. You'd always open the door anyway, but it's actually faster to take the gun because um, we can try and shoot at him. Um, and it instantly tri but triggers the next scene. Because, I mean, you could take whoever it is through sheer good looks and m muscle and all that. Just, I, I should have the pistol. Oh. Huh. Huh. When you put it that way. Not here. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Funny. You should get your own show. Huh. Sometimes that doesn't open either. It's weird. Also, you do actually get an aiming prompt there to aim at him, but you can literally just match to shoot. You don't actually need to aim at him and it'll trigger the scene. Um, and now we've just got to wait and watch like this cutscene for like a good another three, four minutes. Um, like this, this part of the game has a lot of downtime. Chapter eight does. You mean with um, like right here, and then at, at the end of chapter eight, there's a lot of downtime. So. Not really much to, not much, much to do. Although there is, uh, there is something I, I can point out. So when I, when I shot Ashley, um, I said it would save time in chapter eight. Well, Ashley isn't very, too, isn't very pleased with Chris because one, he tried to kill her with the saw, but then he also tried to shoot her. So when Chris goes to leave the lodge in a second, um, usually if you. If yeah, Ashley's on good, ter good terms with you, she'll, she'll give you a kiss. It doesn't matter to me um, if you believe it or if, not. If she's not, she'll just stand there and I ignore you. That's that obviously faster. So that's why we shoot her you. in the trap. He's guilty as shit. Guilty as something. Shut up, Mike. There is a curse that dwells in these mountains. Should any man or woman resort to cannibalism in these woods, the spirit of the Wendigo shall be unleashed. Oh, crap. <laughs> You're gonna need to find somewhere safe. The basement might be okay. Okay, get down there now, all of you, and wait. What? Why? For how long? Guys, I ran off and left Josh when I heard screaming. Where did you leave him? In the shed. Uh, your friend will already be dead. No, no, he can't be. We, we were just with him. A lot can happen quickly on this mountain. No, I'm gonna go get him. You can't go out there, Chris. I'm supposed to be his best friend and, and, and I let him down. No, he let you down, Chris. He let all of us down. I don't care, I'm going to get him. Then I'll go with you. I, I don't need your help. He going alone is suicide. Fine. The rest of you, get down to the basement. Be safe. And don't go outside again until we're back. You don't seem to understand the magnitude of the situation. Well, I'm going to get Josh, aren't I? No, I'm going to get Josh. You're going to help me. Do you understand? Uh... Yeah, I think so. You need to follow me and do everything I tell you. Oh, I ain't gonna be finished with this run till until dawn myself. Yeah. This oh, we're about like three hours in. I know how to use a shotgun, man. Yeah, there's not no, long left don't. now. Maybe like what? 40, 50 minutes, I think. Pretty know? much the uh, the execution of all of the, all of the survivors. Yeah. It's just a shame that not many of the, the, the people can die early on in the game. Yeah, so right there, Ashley would usually kiss you and, you know, stuff, but she doesn't. So it's faster. So, so, so tell me, you're the expert on these things. What's, uh, what, what's a guy gotta know? You just be careful. You follow my lead. I thought Chris disappeared then. I, I went down the stairs and I looked at my other screen and looked so, back, and he was in line with the, the, the flamethrower, dude. I couldn't even see him. I thought I was I'm wondering where I was. I didn't even know I was walking down the stairs. I was really confused. No, it'll slow it down. But how do you kill it? They don't like fire. I don't like fire. They fear it. It's like tough armor, unless you burn it off first. It's gross. Well, what are these things like? 
like? I mean, are they just crazy unpredictable, or... I mean, can you figure out what they're gonna do? Well, they adhere to some patterns. Like any animal. Or human. Well, you mean like how? Like they've got schedules? Well, they only hunt at night. Oh. Why? I didn't ask. Any, uh, pro-Wendigo tips? Like if I rub garlic all over me, they can come to smell me or something? Uh, okay. Anything like that. So there's gonna be a, a, a don't move sequence again. We're gonna fail that one again, because we failed literally all of them uh, after gone. chapter two. We're too late. Oh no, I failed whatever, whatever will I do? What's gonna happen? I'm sure it'll be fine. Everything's gonna be, everything's gonna be great. Oh, never mind, he's dead. <laughs> looks like we, he wasn't here very long. Looks like we got a bit ahead of ourselves. <laughs> And now Chris is dead. He got a bit ahead of himself too. Oh, <laughs> he looked a bit shocked as well that he was dead. He did. A good one on natural. Yes, now we're just kind of waiting again. Not really much to do here either. We will have to read another book, but that's for a couple minutes again. There's a lot of downtime in this chapter with not much going on. I am so sorry. Okay. Maybe you should sit down. Fine, Sam. Okay. Okay. What about the old guy? No sign of him. I think. He's got to be dead, too. All right. These are all the doors? Yeah. Are you sure? What are you looking for? Another way out. Do you have the key for the cable car? Josh. He's got to have it. Josh? One of his dirty little tricks. So I do want to say, while well, we are waiting here, hey. and uh, I know it's a little that bit off topic here, but then I if I remember correctly, and I guess this kind of is a bit more fitting because okay. it is December, I'm gonna and next month is AGDQ. Right I believe you actually have a run in AGDQ, right? What is all that? I do, yes. Uh, how about you uh, tell us a little bit about that when you might be uh, coming up for that? That guy was prepared for anything. Um, Not quite. Well, I will be running an actual good game that has a bunch of glitches oh and skips and doesn't just roll, 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 and push the scenes. I'll be running Uncharted 2 on. So like the PS4 version on PS5, which should be fun. Like um, I won't. That, that game, rules. that game hasn't yeah, been ran at an ADDQ since I'm just saying, 2014, I believe, and that run was glitchless. So, if That's you've never seen a run of Uncharted, you're in for a treat because it is very, very broken, and it is a very fun and interesting you experience to watch. All right, I'll be doing that. Yeah. Hope we'll be a good time. No leave. Okay. Hey, well. I think it's near there. towards the end of the Nearer, nearer to the last day, I believe. 
Although I also do need to ask, uh, in regards to the you having a PS5, because you know they're rather difficult to obtain. Oh, fuck did, me. did you buy one to run uh, oh, Until God. Dawn and Uncharted and games like that, or did you like actually just want a PS5? Um, I wanted a PS5 because I wanted to play um, the new Spider-Man game. Um, and I, di I didn't want to play it on PS4, but I also really wanted to play Demon Souls. So that's one of the reasons I bought it. But I guess um, playing uh, Uncharted was just a bonus. But, you know, it, it, Uncharted doesn't make a difference on PS5. If you play it on PS4 Pro with an SSD, it's pretty much the same thing. So, But this game, however, oh, no, two minutes free no, time save. No. What is it? What does it say? That I only figured out the other day because I hadn't tested it on PS5 yet until the other day, that. properly, so... Like, you know, when you're looking at the game like this and you're just watching yourself play it, you don't notice. I only noticed how much time it actually saved when I put the time on. And had splits. It, it, it's crazy how much time it saves. Yeah, unless you want to, um... Play a bunch of PS5 games that you actually want to play, like the ones that are out. PS5 just isn't worth it at the moment, there's nothing on it. I don't really use mine, not much. It just sits there. that lead to someone's death or passively allowing tragedy to occur. I haven't really joined the PS5 train because this is literally the only PS4 game I think I run. Um, that and Night Trap. Remember last year? Huh? Are you Never heard it is an die? FMV game. That's like one. It's another game like watching a movie, actually. Paralyzed by your own self-centered fear. Uh, you should want to a hidden agenda. Isn't that's made by these these no, guys? I think. You, yeah. It's always all yeah. about you. Also, the big plot twist was the the patient in therapy was Josh, and he doesn't even get a napkin. Game has gone terribly wrong. And your friends yeah. like you, sister, Also, as you can see, the doctors are getting a bit more. Uh, Pale and stuff, because he's slowly turning into a zombie. Also, I guess the real plot twist is that Peter Stormare never really existed. He was all a part of her imaginations. That's a good point. Did you hurt them, Joshua? Why did you hurt them? Oh, but of course you did. They were your friends. You misled them. You lied to them. Like, I basically, when I got my PS5, I played a lot of Demon's Souls and stuff, and I I did some Miles Morales speedruns, and I, I platinumed the PS4 version and the PS5 version, and then after that, my PS5 kind of just sat there, not being used after I was done with those. I, I do have the new Ratchet & Clank game, but I never played it. I haven't played it yet. It, doesn't, it never really interested me. So, the only reason I have it is because it came with a bundle. Apart from that, I just don't use it. Come on, we gotta get down to the basement. Literally, before I did until dawn the other day, I hadn't used it in months, so... I do feel like it's a waste of money for what, what it has on it at the moment. But then again, I guess if, you know... You play a lot of console games, then it's, it is worth it, I guess. But I, you know, I, I only play PC stuff. I use the PlayStation for mostly exclusives, so... There isn't many ex many exclusives on it at the moment that I, that I want to play, so that's why it just sits there. That guy was prepared for anything. Shit. Fuck, fuck. Well, I was very surprised that this game ran at 60 FPS on PS5. It's not safe out there. I was very surprised because it never got a patch or anything. It just runs natively at 60 on the PS5. Very strange. Although, um... Well, it's now on I guess another nine. topic on the PS5, though, um, I think there was, like, an announcement recently, um, or a rumor or something, but they said they were going to try putting backwards compatibility or something as kind of like a PlayStation Plus or a PSN store deal. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, potentially, depending on how it all runs. When, I remember when the, the PS5 rumors were first coming out and they, there was rumors that it was going to be backwards compatible with every single PlayStation console. I wish I, I wish, wish that I would happened, have bought day one. <sighs> Shame. Yeah, so now we're back in the sanatorium. 
Um, and, but we do have to do a bunch of stuff in the sanatorium first, but we're not going to play through this entire sanatorium section. Um, obviously, if you've played this game... See, I'm not, I wasn't holding left and he was just moving that one on his own. Um, if you've played this game, you'll know that this sanatorium section is pretty long. You have to go through a bunch of stuff. But um, we're not going to do that. And the main reason we're not going to do that is because of the earlier choice when we kicked the, the wolf. Um, that's going to come in very, very handy very soon. Mark's not going to die. Um, you'd think he would die with what happens, but he doesn't. It's very strange. It's very strange that you can even do this, to be honest. But it works, and it saves a good, like, four minutes or something like that, so I ain't complaining. First, we've got uh, we to get this uh, sword off shotgun. I just need a pitchfork and a mob. We need that to uh, get through this uh, gate over here because it's got a lock on it. We need to shoot because for some reason he didn't keep that pistol from earlier. Remembers that we kicked it. But we still got a bit more to do first. We basically need to just get into the main big room um, where the Wendigo would be. So this wall's been uh, nearly ripped in half. Pretty sad. Oh, yeah. A bit. Also, if you don't like seeing dogs and wolves die, please look away. Thank you. Very sad. Not yet. I thought I'll be there in a minute. So we need to shoot the box. Huh? And I'm just going to stand here. Not shoot this guy. Then we're going to fail the QTE. Also, Rip Wolf. 
Exad. Don't shoot this again, and then now we get... You'd think we would die. This is what skips this entire section. For some reason, this skips the section, but you don't die. It's very strange. But coming up very soon-ish is the hardest climbing section of the game. Um, but I'm honestly not too fussed about it now if I fell, because obviously I'm not trying to get a PB and that chapter seven skip was really bad, so. But you know, it'd be nice to not fall off, but it can happen. skips a lot that's why we have to kick the wolf in uh, chapter five if you don't the wolf will actually save you there and won't die so it's impossible to fail there if you kick if you don't kick the wolf that's why we have to kick it because it saves a lot of time like tiny little details like that that tiny little detail of kicking the wolf saves you that much time crazy okay this is maybe the last place i would want to be right now so who's going first? It's not so bad. You think this is the tunnel to the sanatorium? Of course it is. Where else would it go? Also, coming up soon is the first time where you can actually get Ashley killed. But like like I said, it's about 50 seconds slower um, than just letting her live. So that's why she doesn't die. Hey, um, hey we should close this, right? Huh? I mean, because you have to go out of your way to actually get her yes, killed close it, but instead of just following the path. Just catch up, please? She gets to live yeah. because it's convenient. Yep. I mean, at least not everyone dies, so it's not a terrible ending. It's 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 pretty bad, but it's not the worst ending possible. Yeah, so right here, she hears a noise. Um, if you go and investigate the noise, you're pretty much dead. I, I do believe there is a way to get out of it, Hello? but I don't remember what it was. But most of the time, if you go and investigate this noise, you're going Anybody? to die, no matter what. If you Jack pick left, up. you're pretty much dead. Is it you? There's no way to get out of it. I believe you need something really specific to be able to Hello? escape. I don't know what it is, though. It's been a while. Yeah, this is the the worst rock climb. Going. It's got a lot of cute things. Good luck. <sighs> so I might fall, but like I said, as long as you don't mash them, because it's not faster to mash them, so as long as you don't mash them and just wait for them to actually pop up, it's not too bad. But the thing is, in this game, if you have a list of QTs that you know you need to mash, if you if you mess up the order of where you are and mash the wrong one you're gonna fall. So that's why I like to just wait for them to show up and then press them, especially on these rock climbs because it doesn't lose time. So no point in mashing it if you don't, if you don't need to. Oh, 
Let's see if we go. Am I gonna fall? Let's find out. Yeah, like that's really, really long. You have to pick three different choices and then there's a lot of QTs on that one. Which is why it's the worst. So right now we're gonna try and go and trying to save Mike. I believe there is different ways you can go here. I think I'm not okay. entirely sure. Um, oh, maybe this is the only way you can you can go. But I know you can look around it for stuff. Now we're gonna go and uh, whack some Wendigo in the face with this pole, this pipe. Yeah, so somehow Mike survived all of that. No idea how. It's crazy that 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 he that that happens and you can skip that entire section, but he still lives. It's weird. Got any marshmallows? Yeah, that's pretty much chapter nine. And we're going on to the final chapter. Whoa. You all right? Uh, Not long left right. now. It's been a fun run so far. Start. Let's find a way down to where this it's been, it's been pretty good apart from the chapter seven skip. But then again, it's not really hard to mess up in a game where you just walk in select choices, no! but it can happen. Also, this, this chapter, since it goes into the final one, it shows you everyone who's died at the start of the previous on section. So I guess if someone didn't die, it would save time there, but it's still gonna save more time with them being dead. Goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. 
That's it. That's it. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's find a way down to where this fucker lives. Right, here we go, final chapter. Chapter 10, Resolution. And as you can see, he looks like a zombie. And his eyes are even greyed out. Which only happens if you select that you're afraid of zombies. So there's going to be a QT in this section, which is faster to fail it. Um, but this section's weird because basically there's going to be shadows and entering those shadows triggers the next scene. Um, so obviously it's faster to just move in a certain direction to get to the shadow as fast as possible. Yeah, so uh, if you haven't gathered it by now, his sisters, um... Beth was dead. Um... But Hannah may not be dead. You'll find out very soon. Oh, I forgot that I was meant to move there, my bad. <laughs> Be the scene is doing. Yeah. Like she's pretty, pretty creepy when she pulls her face off. Thing used to be a person. Yeah. Maybe a miner. Maybe someone who worked in the sanatorium. 
so much weird shit happening up there that wouldn't even begin to surprise me. Oh, so this is the one part where you basically get to see everyone who's dying, um, because there's a room where they're all hanging up. And obviously, if no one's dead yet, then there'll be no one there. I must just let them all out when I blew the place up. You don't want to mash X here because there's a totem to the right that you can pick up from that far away. It's dumb. Fine. I'm going in. He has really long hands. Uh, do you know, I literally, the other day when I was playing, I noticed at the start of the game, his hands were so long. That's why they can, that's why they can do um, it. It's weird because, like, I've noticed that Josh's hands were kind of long before, and I've always thought the hands in this game on the male characters look really weird. But then I saw, I really noticed Mike's the other day. His hands are abnormally long. It looks really strange. Like it's very noticeable in uh, chapter one when he, when you first meet Matt and Emily and he's talking to them. It's very noticeable there. A long nail. Mr. Point, maybe he ran out of ammo. What's he gonna do with the shotgun if he's got no bullets? Jacket. Wait, I didn't think we'd get you back. Hey, let's just get the fuck out of here. Okay. Josh, do you have the key for the cable car? <sighs> Not long left now, just uh, two more sections to go. Oh, God. Or technically three. See that if you there? can, the lodge. That means there's a direct way out. Come on. So, surprisingly enough, I guess for people who may be, no you know, wondering Josh this game casually. Uh, with the whole, you know, twist of Josh and everything, people kind of wonder how he factors into the game. You can actually save Josh. Uh, he is uh, one of the saveable characters, uh, even if it may not seem that way. But it's very specific on how he's saved, and that's what will lead to a bonus cutscene if you end up saving him. Yeah. Um, where basically, um, if you do end up managing to save Josh, he will uh, turn into a Wendigo. Which means he's still not, he's technically not dead. You see, he, he you lives. You save him. <laughs> it counts. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry about it does count. He's just, he's a cannibal who likes to eat people. It's just a shame that there's no actual happy ending for Josh, and there never will be. All the other characters can be properly saved, but yet he can't. Uh -huh. okay.
And I say goodbye to Josh. He's going to get his head popped. Oh my god, it's his sister. If only we didn't drop her in the beginning. <laughs> this never would have happened. You know, if she if she listened to Emily, she would have lived. That's true, it's just a prank. Exactly. Oh. She, she was right the whole time. Also, yeah, I believe this game was mocap. Our last climbing section. And there we go, last climbing section done. Come on. Now on the final stretch, we just gotta get back to the lodge and then we've got the final final section of the game. So not long left. But like I said earlier, um at the start. No matter what you do, you always get the same ending. So there's no different way to end the game. It's just, you'll always get the same ending. It just depends how many characters are, is alive. Will depend on um, what kind of scene plays out after the after the, the game's done. Uh, because basically it will show you the scenes of everyone who died and then it will interview everyone who's alive. Um, so the only difference is who it shows who dies and who it interviews, that's pretty much it. The ending's always the same. It depends how fast you get there, is, is what matters with this run. And we've got our last two QTs of the entire game. There's one. And there's two. There's, there's all the QTEs done. And we've got the final part, which is pretty simple. This this final part is mostly just a cutscene. Um, you do do a little tiny bit of walking, and then we're just kind of watching it play out. So. I like how those light switches don't even move. What do you think we should do? We should check the basement. Might be someone left down there. You just gotta walk down these stairs and then that's it for the movement in the game. I believe time should be coming up in a moment here. Uh, it's all about, uh, about two or three minutes left. I just gotta without this final scene. Let me get our last choice of the game in a second as well. Or we're gonna run away. 
as well. Um, Instead of blocking the door. Of all the work Matt Matt's done here with uh, killing people early, um, normally what would happen is uh, if you want, if you choose to play out the final section, uh, there'll always be one um, survivors run out one by one from the house. Yeah. So if you're trying to save everyone, you have to make sure that you keep passing actions until everyone gets out. But since we're not doing that, well. Yeah. We'll see. We still take long enough to actually get out. Also, Sam gets a lot of leeway. That's well, funny enough, uh, is being asked in chat in terms of killing everyone. Yeah, you can totally beat the game with killing every single character in the game. Uh, I think if the police just come to the house and it's on fire. Yeah. Also, Rip Sam. She dead. We'll have one survivor. She goes, she's out, she's off. She lives. And then Mike's gonna die. Huh? Huh? How's that for your fuck? Red Mike. So technically you do get three survivors to the end of the game. It's just two of them die. Right at the end. So time's coming up in a second. I will I will let you know when time is, is gonna happen. Basically, the, the game's gonna fade to white and then fade to black. Uh, time is as soon as it fades to black. So I'll just I'll just say time when when it's time. Too bad. Fuck. I mean, that most of that time loss was from me messing up the skip, not working. So. There you go. Now you get to see everyone die again. Yeah. You get to watch Emily get her eyes jammed in again. Well, so, everyone's you know. uh, the uh, the the helicopters came because of Emily. Though. That's true. Intelligent. But I don't like her still. <laughs> or Emily. Like... Intelligent, smelligent. Unless she goes dead. No! It's weird it doesn't show them in order. I'm guessing what it would do is it's probably akin to how they would play the police recordings, maybe. Maybe. So I know the credit section, um, if you beat the game with survivors, um, they kind of tell their recollection of the events to the police, like, oh, hey, here's, here's what happened. Uh, and we'll probably see Ashley's in a moment here. So they probably do the deaths first and then they get to those. Yeah.
heard Jessica. I don't know how or why she was down there, but I know I heard her. I'm Josh, a Wendigo. It has to be. What? The monster. It took him down into the mines where it lives, and Sam and Mike, they went to go find him, and we were going to meet back at the lodge. But... And there we go. That's it. All right. That's the game. Once. Hey, you, you just play O Death again in the credits. Good song. Well, once again, I do want to say thank you for doing a run of Unsold Dawn. And questions. One, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Um. I'd like to give a shout out to. Uh, I actually don't remember his name. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Zooks, Z O zero X, I think. He uh, he's he's been featured in this game a lot, um, the past year or two, um, and he's put a lot of effort into the game. So, I mean, he had the world record before I beat it with PS5 and the new skip. So, um, yeah, shout out to him. Um, shout out to the people who actually you know, have found a lot of the strats in this game, um, like like Nems and stuff and. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The game's pretty straightforward enough that you could just pick it up and run it if you wanted to. If you like the game, just pick it up, do a run. It's pretty simple. You could easily get like four hours, 30 minutes. It's not hard. Yeah. Just play the game. Absolutely. As well, if anyone did want to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find me on Twitch with the same name that I have. Matt Matt, just Matt Matt. Um, um, and my Twitter is Matt Matt 10111 because that used to be my Twitch name, but it sucks. But I can't change my Twitter, so but yeah, that that's uh, that's all that's all I have to say. All right. Well, that being said, uh, it's been a, definitely a long run of the night, and I think we are about uh, ready to wrap up the show for the night. Uh, it's not every every day we get to one of the longer runs. It's definitely fun to have the ride going. And I want to thank you once again, Matt, Matt for uh, being with us and doing the run for us as uh, we went through a long journey until you literally until dawn. It's literally nearly seven a.m. for me now. I'm going to bed. Get some good rest. <laughs> and as uh, thank well, you for having me. Hey, it's pretty fun. Thank you. Uh, we are going to be wrapping up for the night. That is, it was a longer stream tonight, so we're going to be wrapping up there. I do hope that you enjoyed Speedruns from the Crypt. It is our bi-weekly horror hotfix. We are here every other Wednesday, and we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, the next episode will probably be the, a Christmas-themed episode, too, because that's on the 22nd, I think. So, uh, we'll be getting into the Christmas spirit around that time, hopefully. As well, as always, if you missed out on any of the GDU Hotfix shows, uh, you can check those out over at youtube.com slash games done quick. And as well, tomorrow we'll be having the first step featuring Resident Evil 2 Remake starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Lastly, I've been your host, Dick Dices. If you ever want to check me out, you can find me at uh, pretty much Dick Dices and all things, uh, twitch.tv slash Dick Dices, uh, on Twitter, Dices underscore Twitch. I very often talk about how I do these shows, how they get prepared, and uh, kind of what goes into that. So you can check me out there. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the night, and thank you once again for joining us. Have a good one. As well, we'll be going to a raid, so feel free to join us on that. Bye. <laughs>